Okay. Um, Alright, so. We are a little bit off because don't have packs in yet. Those greens aren't set up for this. Oy. But we are also finally back. It's been uh, a little while okay. since we got to play D&D. &D. Um, don't mind me while I... Because it has been so long, I haven't updated any of my books in the D&D Beyond app, so they are all, hey, <laughs> update, update. Jesus, everything needs an update. Okay. So, campaigns, uh, ice cream down, alrighty. Um, so, welcome back to my, um, uh, welcome back to Magic Mushrooms Mead. Um, we, like I said, are finally back for some D&D &D this week. We've got one player's running late and another who is restarting his crappy computer. Um, and in the meantime, uh, let's Forge compilation. That's the page I was looking for. So, um, you may or may not know that we are a uh, an Arkan Forge affiliate. Uh, and if you would like to know about Arkan Forge's Master's Toolkit program, which is the one that we use for our maps, uh, it has a one-time payment with no subscription fee. You can use it fully offline or online, like we do on. Discord or Skype or whatever. Um, it can be installed on an unlimited number of devices with a single purchase. You can easily import and manage your own content, uh, build fully animated maps with real-time lighting, hook up a TV or projector to play in person. Um, you can manage your maps with a robust linkable note system, set the scene with immersive audio uh, we generally use uh, music d20 uh, and uh, you got a full commercial license with your exported maps that includes uh, oh this says that there's a black friday cyber monday sale there is not a sale on right now maybe i should skip to the next one um, there skip to the next one <laughs> um, there's no sale on right now, unfortunately. Um, yes, full commercial license. Exactly. $5 off with mushroom dips. Uh, and it's touchscreen compatible for use with physical minis. Um, they do have a new pack coming soon as well uh, for scene setting to have like a uh, splash screen to create a splash screen um, but if you go to arkenforge.com and use code mushroom tips one word uh, at checkout you can get five dollars off of the master's toolkit program either the fantasy or sci-fi starter pack 
Uh, the starter packs include the Master's Toolkit and either the Fantasy Essentials or Sci-Fi Essentials content packs. Um, and there's also a 14-day tr free trial that gives you the full, the full program to play around with. Uh, so give that a try, and if you like it, use Mushroom Tips at checkout to get $5 off. And uh, yeah, then we just need to wait for, uh, we just need to wait for uh, Pat to get back. How's, how's he doing? Is he, uh, <laughs> uh, how's the computer doing? How's Dark and Darkest Dungeons going? I may have just had a problem. that one person on there. Yeah, he's trying to get programs running. Soon, he says. Okay, let's shoot the shit for a little bit until he can get back on. Yeah. Um, yeah, perfect. How far are you now? Fun, like, uh, I still haven't made it first past, essentially past the first chapter yet, so... Oh, really? Uh, you know. I'm not great. It's fun. Yeah. It's very much a game, kind of... D&D-esque in the sense that uh, it's turn-based, right? Oh yeah, yeah. I've played, I played the first one and I was playing the second one for a bit before I started getting this going. Darkest Dungeon that is for anyone watching at the moment. Um, yeah. That's great. We'll risk it for the biscuit. You'll regret. Yeah, probably. Usually do. This is what this game is. I, I think I can make it, and then <coughs> everyone's dead. Yeah, do. Or everyone goes insane. So, yeah, you guys, you guys did loot this place, didn't you? Loot what part? Loot the, uh, laboratory. I think that's what we were doing when we finished. Is we yeah. Were like, yeah, we're going to rest and we'll pull out. Because this is the same spot where we found all those brains having them. Yeah, the, it's the, the same building. Yeah. Right? yeah, yeah. Because yeah. okay. we were we were debating about if we could uh, make one of those brains in the jar spot. We had one point. Uh, so yes. Have. I think. I think they tried to convince Iggy to 
go through with that, but he decided not to. should be back soon <laughs> and we can actually get started um, in the meantime uh, actually I should probably get yeah, I should probably get that's uh, one Dale open Not good at stalling. <laughs> That's okay. Well, luckily, right now we've only got one viewer, which is probably one of us. Or my nephew, who would not be able to. Uh, um, would not be able to chat because. We're technically an adult program because we swear. <laughs> Pat's computer is struggling with this for Hey, on? you're back. Man. Fuck, like it. Discord, it was just like it would not. It goes, <laughs> not responding. And I go, okay, well, time to go turn on the task manager. Task manager, not responding. Okay, that's us. That's weird. <laughs> Fucking. Discord is weird sometimes when you uh, restart it. Yeah. Oh. That one sucks. That's all good. So, uh, did I run up and blow up the obelisk yet? No. I'm we have not uh, gotten that far yet. And of course, now. Okay, I look amazing. Let's see, if I'm gonna push my stuff to the limit again. I'm gonna turn on Twitch. anyone ever wants to give me a, a really nice computer that I can use, that'd be awesome. <laughs> well, uh, one I yeah. have actually is, it was really, really, really good about fucking 10 years ago, I thought. 
Yeah. It was like, it was better than top of the line 10 years ago. That's why I can still run video games now. <laughs> right? Invested in my computer when I had money, and now I don't have money, so computer's still good. Well, I invested when I didn't have money, but I spent it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> that uh, sounds like me. That's good. Nice. You guys went and you guys did our, our uh, affi uh, affiliation. Yep. Okay. I already went All through right. that. Sweet. And who that, was that with again? That's with Ark and Forge. Ark and Forge. Fuck yeah. All Fuck right. yeah. <laughs> so, um, welcome back to Magic Mushrooms Mead. Finally able to do the actual intro. Um, this is episode 71, um, the Herald of Winter. Uh, Are you now telling me that we're at 71? Because I had that we were at 71 last time, and that had created, and then after like 50 episodes, I said we were an episode behind. So now we're an episode back to where we where my original count was. Back before we knew we were behind 70. I think I, I'm so. just I'm just making fun of it. I I just have to make fun of that because there was one point where you jumped ahead an episode and now we're jumping behind an episode according to my count. Now I'm just like I think so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure seventy one is correct. That's, that's what I have it? written down right now because uh or at least that's what I have in my document that seventy one was uh when we sat in the eight chairs and uh Oh, maybe we're on we seventy two series by Sorry. Maybe we're on 72. I'll have to uh, check again. We're on episode 70-something. Okay. I think the we should of jump ahead to 73, just to be safe. <laughs> right? That way we're not doubling up. And we are good. <laughs> um, previously on, the uh, Fringe Arcana Department of Baldur's Gate University uh, finished their rest and looked through a bunch of uh um look through the gigantic pillar that's actually inside the um the atrium below and found that it could be used to create a gigantic anti-magic zone um but that that would make everything non-magical uh, including things that they had on them. Then they figured out the um, puzzle to use the eight chairs of the high wizards uh, to get up to the study of Ariolarthus. There they met the lich and well the uh, the the demi lich now after so long and didn't give him a chance to monologue. Just went in and fucked him, fucked him in the eye. In the eye? <laughs> well, he's a skull. <laughs> Where else are you gonna fuck him? Uh, just fucked him up. Um, yeah. Then you guys went and Oh, I actually do remember there was a discussion about the um, the the scroll of Tarask summoning. Uh, and... Basically, taking taking all my yeah. shit. So don't worry, I haven't forgotten. <laughs> no, no, no. I, well, no, we we, uh, we left you with the the scroll of Tarask summoning. No, I got we, I have nothing because you guys wouldn't let me have any of it we because I have the staff. No, 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 no. I have nothing. I, I have the Lilith staff because, it. yeah, that was no, the only thing Lilith that I had. No, got the scroll of comet. I specifically have got, that written down. Brian got the other one. I literally. And then you, you, you got his. Then you got Ariel Arthas's staff. Yeah. Because we which, split. We, we essentially got two stupid powerful scrolls and a staff, and we're like, yeah. okay, let's not just stack all of this on one person. No, technically. Plus, I you're got you're one. the only person other than the. Uh, um, 
other than oh. the, the sidekicks who can yeah. use the staff. Yeah. And, and well, we basically turn to you and we're like, yeah, we, we don't give that staff to our friends. We keep that staff in the party because that's a... I would have liked staff. to keep one of those scrolls, but I didn't. But <laughs> that's beside the point. Anyway. <laughs> so I'm just Well, we also, like, half of the party is, just, like, you know, not especially trusting of you because, like, mm. you kind of do some murders hobo shit but i haven't murdered i'm probably like i said one of the probably most not evil people in this entire party i feel like that would be very debatable yeah <laughs> like I've, even the things i've done it, which you guys are like that's that's horrible i was doing it to try to help somebody like getting somebody's eye ripped out i was trying to make them good again. not maybe maybe not the best way to go about it but at the time it seemed like a really good idea <laughs> <laughs> like chaotic neutral at best uh, but good chaotic neutral so I'm Any boost. looking to see it's all up for debate you know kind of like religion you know you kind of everyone's got their little taste on it right? yeah anywho what are we up to well, first, I'm going to confirm who actually has the uh, scroll. So oh, my siblings went and uh, uh, annihilated all my stuff. Lilith has the scroll of Comet. Yes. And I didn't. Re I totally forgot about the other scrolls, Trask. So. Yeah, that one's. Both of them are fantastic. Great because I, I specifically basically have the last note that I handed Lilith the scroll and said drop this on when, on her head when we're all dead. And you trust her more than, than Decker? Uh, you um, have to remember uh, uh, Critman had very li limited interactions with the entire party before yeah, Lilith fair enough. came back. So of what he's seen of the party... Uh, Decker's Lilith the most is unhinged, I suppose. It, it, Lilith is probably the most like trustworthy that he's seen. Uh, <laughs> I should have sane. taken you aside and told sane. you some stories about <laughs> Lilith, which is it, she's probably the least sane person. Well, I, yeah, and, and and within like context of the whole yeah, campaign, context, yeah, Lilith yeah. is kind of uh, fuck civilization and let the trees take it over, but. Uh, Critman hasn't seen a lot of those interactions, so yeah. he just kind of was like, yeah, yeah here. When, uh, when you're still alive, didn't the rest see of us her. What did she do? Did she did she kill those sailors, the the yeah. whalers? She helped. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. She yeah. Act, yep. I remember that part where yeah. she was actively uh, killing the sailors. We were like, wait, wait, they're going to sail the boat for us. And then she was oh. like, no, no, no. They whaled. They're dead to me. Yeah. <laughs> Given. Uh, yeah. Anywho. Yeah. But Crippen didn't yeah. see that. Um, so nobody has the scroll of Tarask summoning written down. That would be that would be uh, Ryan. I, he would Ryan have might have it, but he I, will have it because I. It's just, not in his inventory. He didn't write it down. I don't. I, I don't have it anymore. So I'll take it back. I got no problem with that. Who gets the scroll? You well, guys you tell me. Ryan. Ryan had quite the conviction about me having all this stuff. Okay. And that was well, a big, it, I will it, give it to him then. It just came down to the fact of we didn't want everything stacked on one person that could nuke a city from orbit. Yeah, and my whole so, plan was anyway, I was going to keep one of those scrolls and use this staff to fucking take out the obelisk anyway. Then I'm not going to have the staff. <laughs> well, we don't even know. Well, we just figured that the staff. We figured that the staff was an activation piece, not an actual, like, you need to destroy it to get rid of it. Type oh, of I was kind of under the impression that I had to destroy it. Destroy it. I guess we'll find out what happens. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> you guys killed Ariel Arthas. You killed his three uh, Nothics. Actually, you turned one of them into a rat, I think, or a cockroach. And then... Uh, ended the spell when it was inside the bookshelf and it <laughs> it got torn in half. So there's half half a Nothic inside the uh, little yeah. library in the center and half outside. 
Crippman, are you gonna take that scroll or are you gonna let Ryan keep it? Oh, I can't even use it, so. Oh, okay. Well, I think That's, anybody can, um, you just have to read I it. I think right? anyone can use yeah. that scroll. Same with Comet. Yeah, you just gotta be able to read it. I'm pretty sure even to use scrolls, you need to be, well, I, uh, um, you have to cast the same type of magic that it is. But these two aren't spells. They're just, They're just special scrolls. So you don't have to even you don't even have to be able to cast spells to use the scroll. Interesting. Yeah. Anyway, that's up for debate. You later. just you, guys, uh, you, you just use an action uh, to read the scroll. About it. So think about that. Yep. Yeah. Think about it before of, before Ryan gets on in uh, the next 15 20 minutes. Yeah. And if you want, me and you can kill Lilith and take that that's uh, spell scroll, and uh, yeah. maybe we can have our own country. Hmm? <laughs> Just something to think about. <laughs> um, yeah, but don't. yeah, are you guys that's gonna? Scary. Proposed to uh, Rickman, to say the least. I think we rested, didn't we? Um, yeah, right. were you guys going to rest? Resting? I thought we did. It's been, <laughs> it's been like two and a half months. <laughs> we have rested as far as I understand. Yeah, that's what I was under the impression. Okay. So let's just pretend we did. Everyone does appear to be at pretty much full. Yeah. Or next to. So I yeah. guess you guys must have rested. Did anyone look around at any of all this paper up here during the rest what paper there are books and whatnot on the we, uh we, the tables yeah we went through those tables yeah that's where we found one of the staff was on the table mm -hmm. i think one of one of the but did you uh, read any of the books or whatnot after grabbing the items that were well, obvious items my my character, you know how he is. Yeah, exactly. He's I was just checking. After. Yes. <laughs> so if there's a book or anything on there, I will take it, and I'm gonna take the guy's name off. I'm gonna write my name. So, um, <laughs> what you actually find is a like the books and scrolls that aren't the major ones. Uh, there's nothing really interesting in them. They're more. Um, None of them are, they're like, you know, romances like, and... Are they romances, like Harlequin romances? Harlequin romances, plays, they're, they're nothing, they're not even good ones. They're like fanfic Harlequin romances. So they're like, they're like really 50 shades like kind of shit. More like 35 shades. Yeah, like exactly. <laughs> um, but you do find a bundle of parchment maps and schematics detailing ah. the city when it was whole oh cool well which one mike uh, is iggy the one that's the smartest right iggy is yes yeah. i'd bring them to iggy and probably Crippman because you guys are probably a little bit more skilled at maps than me so i'll lay them out on the table and i'll say i'll show them. all right maybe there's something of interest that we missed so, working together, um, because Deckard, you can read any language, right? I, yep, I can read any language. Yeah. So, working together, Crippman and Iggy are looking at the actual drawings. You're looking at what's written around on the uh, schematics. Um, you might be able to tell if there's like any, say, uh, magic on these scrolls or hidden uh, marks. You know, like uh, where you put up to the moon or you put water over it or you look at it and keep would i be able to detect um, if there's anything on there where there's a little hidden something or other mark on the map you do find something like that <laughs> um so we'll go through things uh one by one we'll start with the things that are just obvious before you get to the stuff that you see needs a little extra work to spot um, so the, the plain, the plain Jane thing here is, uh, that the city was held aloft by the Mithilar, 
and up to eight mages could attune to it at one time, and if all of them agreed on a specific course of action, they could either move the city or control the weather for of so many kilometers, for leagues and leagues and leagues. Uh, or a crash. <laughs> or a crash if, if it turned off. <laughs> All right. Fair enough. Um, Does that make some, some sense, Krippen, or something? Well, it, it just explains the winter. This, uh, this, effective... this might be caused by the winter? Effectively, oh. that's likely. It's likely the myth liar is what is causing the winter because he's just dictating that um, it would affect the weather in a massive area, right? And it doesn't uh, seem that the winter has been, at least as far as we have noticed, the winter isn't necessarily expanding. It's just been super centralized here so far, right? So far, yeah. It's just been in this area, yeah. Yeah, oh, so I'm, you're, you're... I, the assumption becomes that this is where they're starting it, and with this magic, they're probably going to try and apply it to the whole realm. Amplify it somehow, would be my assumption. Or maybe they just accidentally have it kind of turned on like this. If somebody is strong enough to, I guess, uh, attune to the eight... eight uh, Mithlar, whatever things, maybe even if it's seven or something like that. Does it say exactly how big the expanse is? Um, then, then it might just be. It's stuff. vague about the distance that it can cause the change in weather. Because um, then, if we turn off these mm -hmm. Mithlar things, we might be able to just stop that without having to attack a god and that sort of thing. We can destroy. Uh, them. Well, you would have to specifically use the Mithalar to cast the spell to change the weather to start warming it up. We would we would still have to override their control of it. Yeah, somehow. Um and that's kinda of that's what it mm -hmm. comes down to the spooky part is. We could just straight up fucking nuke this place with Comet and then boom, oh, everything's all done. Uh the, the Comet would not just just destroy the Mithalar. Unfortunately, when we we mm. we, um, we we probably would have learned this talking to the uh, the magic anvil, where I stole his hammer. Yeah. Uh, there are some the legendary fire? items that just cannot be destroyed by any means. Artifacts. Some, yeah. What what if? Artifacts what if cannot got, be destroyed. What if we got that big old creature to eat them, and then he went back to his own thing? If we got the Tarask to Let eat the Mithalar yeah. and then somehow dismissed it. Yes. I I I kinda wanna find the flaw in that plan, but on the <laughs> other hand, like it's just so insane it might work. Um because then you're but then the scary part becomes wherever Tarasks are from, they you're just gonna have this Tarask running around creating this inhospitable climate around itself and i find that absolutely hilarious as well <laughs> it would just be like forever an, Ar an arctic tarasque yeah, spewing out ice blasts all over the place and nobody knows where tarasques actually come from right and that, that that's that, and that's the part about the, this whole planet is like The spell, we can't just dismiss the. unfortunately. I don't think we can just dismiss it, though. Do we know if it's a certain amount of time, or do you have to actually, like, kill it? Does the scroll say if it only lasts for a certain amount of time, or...? Um, it's not that it would last a certain amount of time. It would be... I mean, it would last a certain amount of time as long as it is not constantly being used. So that would give the impression that whoever is causing the winter, which so far you guys are under the assumption that it's oral, would have yep. to be using it again and again and again and again in order to oh. keep it going. So once so the duration ends, then they have to use it again to keep it going for another duration and another. Okay, so it's not an 
It's not so. like a it's not like a, a dial where you just turn the dial to minus fifty and it stays there. It's okay, you set the timer to minus fifty and then it close slowly turns back. And then you have yeah. to reset it every time. Yeah. So okay. would that mean if but. we could find the cycle we could wait for some of the guys that have to come back and attune to it and we just since you need eight guys to have go on the same kind of page, we could pop one of them one of them off. And uh then basically that breaks the cycle. It is up to eight. Up, up to eight. So it could yeah. be could be one really. It could person. be it could be one person, as long as they can cast spells, they can attune to it. But what so. would that one person do if they're head to head with Tarras? <laughs> Probably get eaten. <laughs> it depend, depends on the person, really. Yeah. You know? <laughs> but likely get just get eaten. <laughs> So you can see where this is going. This is a pretty good plan so far. I like. I see it. I... Can you find the flaw in the plan? <laughs> <laughs> I see where you're going that's, with it. I that's just... what. That's what uh, Kingsport says. Can you find the plot flaw in that plan? Uh, thank you, Kingsport. For that. <laughs> Sometimes I'm I'm so smart. I don't even know how I do it myself. This is amazing. <laughs> and you people call me insane. Well, the insane part is, is then we have to try and get the fuck away. Get to Rask somehow, and, and I don't know how to. Well, do you think you could get out of the city? We could run away. I'd just leave it. In the, uh, yeah, but I don't. I, I don't think it would just stay in this giant cavern. Well, then they know eventually it's somebody else's fault, right? I, I feel like if we summoned it to Rask up near the ten towns, it's gonna to become a ten towns problem, and then yeah, that's just I, gonna become our I'm... problem again. Well, you know, we just go back to Baldur's Gate, and, uh, you know, we get, we get all of our good stuff, we fi figured it out, we saved everything, suddenly a Tarrasque showed up, man, that's weird. Crazy shit happened. But, uh, you know, <laughs> <laughs> how could that have happened when we solved this? It just doesn't make any sense, right? So nobody can technically blame us for it. And, uh, yeah. You know, we're all good. I'll publish my book, Easy Peasy Life, after that. We're all good to go. King Sports says, only our consciences could uh, <laughs> prevent us from saying something. Well, let me tell you, I've got a couple easy ways to kill that conscience. So, uh, <laughs> takes a little work, but uh, don't have to worry about your conscience anymore. I'll teach you if you'd like. I'd like to learn. All right, done. Sit down and meditate with me for a while. Okay. And as he's sitting down meditating, I'm going to go grab something heavy and start creeping up behind him. <laughs> Kill him. <laughs> and then when he opens his eyes, I'll be like, you better keep your mouth fucking shut or this is what's going to happen. <laughs> Give me a, give me an intimidation. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't think I'd actually have to intimidate someone. That's kind of funny. <laughs> well, you, you just said what you're doing. You're... Oh, natural twenty. Oh my god. <laughs> For twenty-eight. <laughs> you, you hear a, p and you think, uh, he just. You just shit him. I mean, he's got a cloaca, so it was one or the other. We both. And I'll be like, so we're, we're on the same page. We're, we're good, buddy, right? And I'll yeah. give him a pat on his head. And I'll pull out one of his feathers and I'll walk away. Okay. Um, so, you get back to uh, the schematics uh, as Kingsport kind of shakes <laughs> where he's standing. I'll probably ask him, can you clean that up? That's that's pretty nasty. Buddy. He gets to it immediately. All right. <laughs> um, so you figure out that if disaster ever struck the city, the wizards could exploit the power of the obelisk uh, to turn back time and avert ruin. Um, and there are uh, directions on how to use the staff of power to activate it. 
on the obelisk on the maps or on those papers that we found? Uh, on the on the schematics that you have, there are directions on how to use the um, staff to activate the obelisk. It doesn't say how far back it can take you, just that it is used to go back in time to avert ruin. I wonder if we go back in time to the start of the cycle. So it wouldn't be going back like thousands of years, right? We might go back 10 years or something, or whatever the cycle is. Do we have any okay, idea of the cycle? Yeah, but what's the point of even inducing time travel then at this point? Like, based on what we figured out so far. My only thing about the time travel would be that if we go back to that time, we wouldn't be waiting around to try to figure out when those people are coming or that person is coming. So we best we go go back and we'd only have to wait like maybe a day or something like that to find out when these people or person comes back and then we can stop that by killing them or doing telling them this is what's gonna happen, right? Well just looking at it from a perspective of why the fuck do we care about anyone who's died in the meantime from this winter? Um, we can just shut the myth, like, just stop the cycle of the everlasting winter. The winter will essentially go back to normal. We recover the Mithilar without destroying or using it, and we become just obscenely rich. How big is that Mithilar, though? I'd imagine oh, it's, it's very big. small. Yeah, it's... So I don't think we'd be able to necessarily take it. Uh, the way I see it is, is uh, basically we we could stop it, but then when that person comes back, they can just attune to it and, and start it over again. You know? Yeah, but why don't we just murder them? That's, that's We've been murdering point, people the whole time, so why, that, why do we I'm need saying. time travel? Why do we need time travel to murder this person? We time just... travel is, is like the um, fast travel to that person. <laughs> Great? <laughs> that, that's, that's the way I see it. It's like it kind of gets us to where this person is, rather than us trying to find out what the cycle is, when the cycle is. Uh, I, we know where, we'll just find out this is going to take us to when, like we said, we don't know how big the cycle is, when the cycle is going to start again, and then we just kind of wait for this person to show up and we kill them. Okay, well, don't we just hang out for a week or two? I'm not good at just hanging out. Well, I guess, we, I, guess, I guess we have to determine how long the cycle does run. Yeah. Because if the cycle is a 10 year cycle and it, they only have to do it once every 10 years or once every 100 years, yeah, okay, then, then it makes sense to go back and... Well, actually, no, it doesn't. Because couldn't we just get Wait. someone to attune to the Mithilar and just be like, actually, instead of being a stupid winter, we want it to be a nice average winter. Like, I suppose if we do that, we just wait for that person to come back and try to attune it back. Right. Exactly, and then we just hang out while they notice, oh, someone fucked up the winter. Yep. Let and me then go we, see what's going on. Then and we then put they the, come te and the tesseract out, and we're, we're golden. Boom! <laughs> Done. Uh, Problem solved. I just, yeah, I don't know, I'm just... The... Do you imagine the book I'm going to write, guys? It's going to sound amazing. <laughs> Except I might, depending if that tesseract gets out, I just might not put that in. <laughs> we'll just, just leave that one. Leave that portion about the, yeah. the the adventure. Yeah. Yeah. We'll just leave that part out, and then we're we're all good. No worry. Right? All right. Do we keep reading through? Does it say anything yeah. about cycles? Uh, it does not say anything about cycles. Um, you do find um in your search for any hidden things um you find the command word to reopen the door back to where those uh eight seats are is saldrinar saldrinar all right i'm gonna tell everybody because i'll probably forget hey guys get back saldrinar all right you heading back now uh is there anything else on that that we're looking at no. there is more Yes, oh, of course. I'm going to read all of it. Okay. As much um, as I can. And the last thing you learn is the, uh, the command word to deactivate the force field 
uh, around the spire is Alliston. Does it also reactivate? Um, just to deactivate, um, it will reactivate again. Um, actually, because of the amount of time that you've been in here, it's probably reactivated already. Um, but it, you learn that if you say the um, that word here in this study, it will permanently deactivate the force field. Oh, so I didn't say it out loud yet. Yes, that having that force field might be very good for us if we actually go against somebody who's going to kick our ass. Like, we could put a Tarasco on the other side and just wait for him to eat everything. And we just stay inside that force field. See, now, now here's the other option. Comet. We figure out, well, because... Because the myth, the mythalar is in the tower, right? It's at the oh, base of the tower. It's at the base of the tower. Yeah. So the tower and... is like literally above it. It's like on a big bridge above the mythalar. So, so hear me out now. We could change the weather. Wait for that motherfucker to show up. Wait, for, well, I was just going to say, well, we, we don't even need to do that, really. We change the weather to figure out how long it takes for the force field to reactivate it, reactivate, time it nicely so that we summon the, the Tarrasque just as the force field re uh, comes back into effect. So we have someone come out just inside, some of the Tarrasque come outside, so the Tarrasque is trapped inside this force field now with the Mithalar. Oh. And then now we just have a Tarrasque protecting this Mithalar until it decides to go away. I like it, but and the only problem anyone is... who tries to walk into it has to try and fight a Tarrasque. I, I... Yeah. I don't know. Hey, there, there's a the part where our Tarrasque's able to see like all around them. Well, do we know about? Because like, if they open that up, they could wait for the Tarrasque to go around and eat everything and just kind of go back in. Or also, we get uh, stuck with the part where the Tarrasque, where uh, we're outside, the Tarrasque is inside, and then the really strong person comes and wants to fuck us up, and also knows so. that word to get back in. So we might be stuck between a Tarrasque and, let's say, uh, uh, a god. I see that. Person. I see what you're saying. Yes. Okay. I, so I that'd be, ooh, that'd be a sticky situation. But in, in that situation too, we also have an out because we can also position ourselves near the uh, obelisk, and then we can go back in time if we fuck that up. Hmm? Uh, I still don't see the point in time traveling in, in this whole situation. Like, well, if we're stuck between a, a god avatar I... and a turaf, then we can uh, go back in time and then. You know, yeah, I see the point in that situation, get out of that. but like, just in, in the situation overall, the time travel almost seems pointless, unless you know, you're good, you're lawful good, and you want to turn back time and save everybody's lives who have you know died from this winter. But but again, you know, I don't think it doesn't really give a fuck about those people. He just we're wants to we're not going to get that far back anyway, is what I think. My my well, perception you, is I could try to save everyone, but it's not going to happen. That's not you know. Those storybooks don't usually happen that way, usually bad shit, but what we can do is if we go ahead with this plan, it can be the option of saving our asses. Well, the, thing, the other thing about going back in time with, with this situation right now is it would also reverse all the da di damage and death in the ten towns from that mechanical dragon to like... Why? Yeah, but I don't feel bad about that because I didn't do that. So. <laughs> no, that wasn't our fault either, and that's why I... Like I said, Crippen doesn't really give a shit. Like, <laughs> these so, people were, we're doing what we can. And the time travel part is, is like, yeah, but yeah, the time travel is only to save our asses when that we get stuck between an avatar and a tourist. That's it. Yeah, I don't even know if we'll find ourselves in that situation. Well, let's do it and let's find out. I don't know. If that's the best yes. plan to do. Though. Does that I, that, I'm, that I'm would involve trap? Yeah, let's do this. This is a great plan. Fantastic plan. 
just imagining Iggy walking in on our conversation right now, thinking, what the fuck am I listening to? <laughs> and it's perfect plan. And we've even got a, a way out. So what's yeah, better than that? So if it all goes to hell, we turn back time. Even if just one of us is able to turn back time, he can go back and be like, hey guys, that's a really stupid idea. Don't do the, that. The other problem that is... Deckard appears to... next to you. <laughs> yeah, hey guys! Right now. <laughs> uh, uh, not the best idea. Oh, okay. And then, then I'll ask Deckard, go, how many times can we go back? And be like, well, this is your fourth time. <laughs> so far, not so good. Uh, we fucked up the timeline. Yeah. We fucked up a few times. <laughs> uh, I we were love making, this. We were I talking it. about trying to get the Tarask to eat the Mithlar and then just dismiss it back to its own place so that we don't ever have to do it with her again. Is Ryan here? Is he just. I'm seeing his mic light up, but I can't hear him. Yeah. Oh, I think I heard a mumble. Anyway, that to me sounds like Iggy is a go with this plan. <laughs> and uh, I, I think, think we should start getting set up for this. I don't think that's a good plan. Iggy, if you're okay with this, don't say anything. <laughs> Beautiful. This oh. is awesome. Let's go. No, that wasn't good enough for me to hear anything. So let's... I think uh, stupid Discord uh, defaulted to um, crap oh, Oh yeah, that I don't know why it does that. Just sometimes it decides. You know what? I'm gonna switch to a different microphone. <coughs> That's why I only have one mic. You guys should be like me. <laughs> Although I was like about 15 minutes late restarting my computer. Yeah. Anyway, Iggy, we're going to uh, fix this whole problem with one easy, easy breezy thing. So sounds great. You're in. Yes. So what, all right, let's do this. What is the actual plan here? Because, like, the yeah. we're gonna go, plan. We're going to go uh, shut off the force field, see how long it takes to come back on. Then we are going to have somebody go and uh, we're going to shut it off again. We're going to wait for that time limit. So just before it's going to come back on, we're going to get Lilith to go in there, summon Thrask, get the heck out. It's going to close right during that small time frame so the Tarrasque can be stuck inside the force field with uh, the fancy rocks Hello. and then, well sorry first, before we do that we're actually going to change the weather so we're going to tune to it, change the weather then we will go and uh, do that thing with the Tarrasque it's going to come close whether or not we're going to wait around for a while our way to get our asses out of there, if let's say something goes south, is that we can still go to the obelisk and turn back and somebody can go back and turn back time to either give us an idea that we shouldn't be doing that, or we can all go back and uh, stop us from doing that, or I'm not sure how time travel works if we're allowed to actually talk to ourselves, or we might blow up. I haven't figured that out yet. But. Wait, how big um, how big does a Tarrasque get? It doesn't matter. Is there enough space? I think it'll be fine. Um, that, that's the only concern. And we, like, this rest. tower is pretty massive as far as I understand. I think you guys are just getting into the small little semantics, which uh, would be no concern. Well, I think if we get out of space, it might shunt it outside of the force field. Or well, it might die inside. Ah! Uh, either I mean, way. If it died inside, that wouldn't even be the worst thing. Yeah, would either, way, either way, we can go back in time with the obelisk, and we can fix it. Because uh, we just won't do that. Can it burrow under? How smart is the truck? Could we burrow under? Why? It would be difficult for you guys to burrow under a, uh, a Tarrasque, though. Like, they, they eat anything it might be able to get through. Well, as long as we hide. Unless the wizards thought of that. <laughs> then it goes underneath. Well, the, this whole theory stems from a fact of if we could convince so... the Tarrasque to eat the Mithilar and then dismiss it. And then we'd just have a Tarrasque with a Mithilar in its stomach wandering wherever the hell Tarrasques come from. So we could go and put something on the Mithilar, Mithilar, Mithilar to make it look like maybe something that it wants to eat. We could paint it with some blood, put a face on it or something like that. If we eat everything, eventually they'll just eat it. Yeah. 
This so, is fantastic fun. Why are we waiting? Let's the, do this. Uh, the more we think about it, the more we get apprehensive. A uh, Tarask, give me a um, an intelligence check. For which one? Any, okay. any or all of you. My intelligence is only fifteen. Iggy, what's yours? She just do it anyway. I got a yeah, nine. Roll. All right, I'm gonna do my intelligence. Okay, I got twenty. Okay, so Deckard, you know that a Tarask is probably about seventy-five feet long. Will it would have, more? it would have so much room. Okay, so I'll say that it has so much room. No worries, guys. It's about seventy-five feet. No problem. Do I tell them that it can burrow under? Probably not. You you would know that it probably could. Yeah, but I'm not gonna say that. <laughs> well, I'll they, say it probably they can't sleep burrow in under. The earth, so they burrow out. So sense reason logically. Yeah, but you got a really bad roll, so you probably don't remember that. <laughs> nah, I talked about that before. I think it's a great plan, and if we get the hell out of there. Because don't we, we, I'm pretty sure we're waiting for that avatar of whoever to come in and, and beat our asses anyway, right? So all we gotta oh. do is hide, literally hide behind the obelisk while the avatar busts her way in. Uh, the Turas busts his way out. And if they don't take care of each other, then we just, uh, we're on that obelisk, we're out. We're back in time. Woo. Well, we gotta die sometime, sure. <laughs> Implication is basically trying to ambush someone when they. Wow, that's that's a bold plan. Maybe we could nail the Tarask with a comet too. Yep. I was just saying, yeah, but we're basically gonna try and ambush someone coming back to this Mythalar with a Tarask. And here's here's Honestly, one of you'll the never most... see it coming. And here's I'm one of the most true. insane parts about it. <laughs> so let's say, right before we leave. We go and we use the comet spell. So the comet's coming down, boom, we hit, we go back in time. Rather than stopping ourselves. Comet has actually... to have open air. I don't uh, think we I can guess, summon yeah. the comet inside yeah. the city. You but have to be anyway. able to see the sky in order to cast it. Yeah. Okay, so aside from that, we see this shit going down. We go to the obelisk. We go, go back in time, however much time it is. We don't bother telling ourselves that it's a bad idea, and we just get the fuck out of there. In that one room, the um, planetarium room. Nobody's expecting us. There was um, was that like a real time thing of the planets and asteroids and stuff? Um, it wasn't real time. It was all destroyed, or no, down in the other room there. Sorry. Um, that would be difficult to tell because you were. It was more like the outer space cosmos, not within the. Um, it was looking out further than um, the near planets and whatnot. Oh, we couldn't go into Abertoral there? No. Not I unless you knew you what the uh, not unless you knew what the the uh, solar system looked out for, uh, looked like from a distance. Because it was just the stars. It wasn't individual planets. Speaking, is Iggy saying this out loud, or is he just pondering? I'll say it out loud, because okay. if it was a real-time thing and it had comets in it, we might be able to use that to summon the comet. That'd be interesting. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. I remember that room. I'm just going to say, when we get out of here, and we get out to the open air, sky stuff, would you be able to make me some really dark sunglasses so I could wear them at night? Um, actually might. If you don't mind oh. um, black ice, yeah. Uh, you know what? I'm a little more afraid of what other things. Are. Yes, I'll take it. <laughs> Either that, or I'll get one of those little visors, like the, um, like in Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. Oh yeah. And it's just he's got that little visor coming up. I'll have that what? so I don't have to look up at the sky. I don't have anything else black and clear, so. I don't really need it too clear. I just don't want to be able to see the sky. Okay. You want blinders? That might be kind of cool. Be like just the make top, you a really big hat. Yeah, I'm okay a with sombrero. that. Sombrero. That's a good idea. Okay. Right. Anyway. Okay. So let's do this. Let's do this. All right. Do you remember the command word to 
open up the door again? Well, I took all those things and I put them <laughs> in my pouch anyway. So I'll just pull out. Uh, yeah. I, I say, don't you guys don't say the word in this room. So we go out of the room and I'll say it again. Whatever is at Dumbledore's key, I can't remember. Dumbledore's key. <laughs> <laughs> Once we get out, then I'll say, this is the word. But I don't want to say it anyway until we get down there. Because right. I want to actually so, start timing it. So, Soldrenar was the word to open up the door to go back oh, down to get here. out. Yeah. Um, oh, a... That gets you here. And, yeah. Are you guys... Are you guys guys going to stop to chat with? Uh, um, where is, is there she? another person? Yeah, there's the crazy brain people. Don't you remember? Where all these oh, people had their brain extracted. And yeah. All basically, brains in a jar, um, and they were guys, having a ball downstairs. You yeah. You guys were saying that you wanted to know if the Taras would eat the the frickin'. Let's grab a couple of those people. And we'll tie them to the Mithra. <laughs> so, Veneranda was the brain in a jar who was not insane like the other ones. Yeah. Um, she's the one who is attached to a helmed horror. And I she, she had told you where the... Um, staff was and what it could be used for but she didn't want to go against Ariel Arthas herself yes but do you want to stop and grab her did we end up uh, we haven't fought Ariel did we fight Ariel Arthas or Ari yeah. oh yeah upstairs, you killed right? him he was the oh, yeah, we cut, yeah we crushed his avatar pretty quickly but he is a demi lich and we didn't know where his oh, phylactery yeah. is you have, you have his uh, someone collected his uh, ashes well, that was Iggy, I'm sure. Yeah, we yeah. were going to dump him in a... Was, was it an astral sea, or was it just a pocket plane that we walked through? Give me one second. Um, okay, well, so oh, yeah, there we the were... Oh, yeah, the fucking... Uh, the bottomless pit. There was the bottomless pit, is what you guys were saying, but there is also that one tower that... Uh, um, there is the one tower that has a... Uh, Ooh, that, I have a better idea. This that's tower. connected to a, a, a hag's lair. Let's try to feed the ashes to the uh, the anvil and hammer that eats magic stuff. That's not a bad idea. That's an idea as well. But let's go grab that that uh, that skull lady anyway. That's a good idea. Okay. She might be able to give us a little bit more info, and I'll like I'll even like sneak her a peek of the um, the staff and okay. some of the ashes and say. Let's let's go. We took care of the problem. If you're interested in getting out of here, you could give us more info on Wonderful. just anything, anything in general, I guess, right? Well, let's get going then. All right, let's do this. Okay, guys, come on, let's go. Top, top, top. So we're gonna be rushing out of here. Which one are you guys going to? Are we just gonna go down? Oh. Well, where are you gonna take the ashes? I think we have oh. at least a day to figure it out. Quit it. Well, I'll so ask that's uh, one of my cats. Was the <laughs> I'll ask uh, with that lady. It's like, do you think that anvil would be able to destroy some lich, uh, ask... magic lich ashes? Um, she says, possibly. I'm, I'm not quite sure that they would count as a magical item. How about we take it to that one place where uh, Stiff Steve disappeared? Just throw it into there. That one you have been told is a hag's lair. Yeah, okay, yeah. Would um, that be bad? That'd be bad for the hag. Yeah. <laughs> See, that's kind of the scary part is giving up the ashes to something like that. Um, what I else can we do with it? And I'm mad about it. Oh, right. uh, yeah, we can, ask the, uh, we can ask the brain lady. What was her name again? I keep calling her Veneranda. Veneranda. Okay, um, we can ask her, how long does it take for the force field to deactivate and reactivate? Um... Because she, she would be conscious the whole time that we were up there ch taking chillin', so... Yeah. Um, 
so um let's see right on the arcane octad what was that um, uh, that area we so had? i was wrong it actually didn't go down you were just able to step through it so it is still there okay can i ask one question guys yep so that uh that area that we have with the anti-magic area um with that big crystal in that one that? kind of area yeah right there so if i go and put the ashes under that will he be able to come back because he's magic right um so that area is specifically a holding cell for the crystal it's not anti-magic there it's just no, that the it's... no it's the the uh um um the crystal can be used to activate an anti-magic um, uh area and how is that a big area oh it's a very big area uh, it's probably what caused the um it's probably what caused the place to crash in the first place I'll be it might be another way to uh, screw up that avatar coming at us and would that would that kill the big old freaking uh, no the Tarask is a non-magical being I'm yeah. pretty sure uh, but it was, um, it was so... brought through a magical thing. yeah but when they it... come magical they're here though you can't get rid of something that you summon with uh you wouldn't be able to summon it in there, but it could walk into it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. that could be our final thing, too, to come back to the anti magic thing. Go hit that. But I still think we should go stick to our original plan. It's just crazy enough that it just might work. Some if, we could, if we could stick the anti magic thing in there somehow, that'd be great, too. Well, we're not using the mythal art. In our current plan, effectively, we're not actually using the mythal art. And if I'm going to be honest with you, I think the anti-magic field probably screws our party more than it helps us. Yeah, that would be kind of uh, like At least for most of you guys, because it take... It not effectively disable Iggy, but it would hit him pretty hard. It would it make would him blind. You. Yeah, it would make Iggy blind. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it would cripple you. Like, you couldn't cast spells. Like... You don't oh. do anything aside from casting spells. So what do you mean? I sing, stand buddy. There and use I sing and I dance. <laughs> but <laughs> your music is uh, is magical. Exactly. It is magical, but you know what? That's just because it's so damn good. People it, just say it's magical. They're they're. <laughs> I don't know how wild shape. How wild shape is magical. Is so, does it work with? Okay, I yeah. wasn't sure how it, it is how magical. And, magic works with it because you can't dispel because ma uh, you can't dispel wild shape right you so, can't dispel it but if a creature that is wild shaped goes into an anti-magic field they come under their wild shape Interesting. so we could just think of this as a flashbang for everybody at the time so let's say everything really goes south we come in here and we activate it and then we have that avatar isn't going to be a crazy motherfucker anymore we just have to try to run past it for us yeah, we don't want to run out of ask. No, I... Avatar is not going to give a shit about a magic field. Yeah, but wouldn't that cut the ties? It's all no, magic. No, it's still going to be here. She might not be able to cast spells, but she'll still punch your face. In. Yeah. But isn't all that that's like uh, imbued by the There would God. be. Yeah, there would be an aspect, I'm sure, that it would lose significant strength from not having access to that, right? But it would be still to tell. The physical manifestation but it's imbued though that's that's what i'm trying to say because to me it'd be like aren't we all technically physical manifestations of our dogs right but we're just not imbued with the we're not the avatar specifically with the, imbued with the strength and the gifts right only if you're a cleric i would argue but um or casting divine magic but again divine magic is still magic um but it's also kind of coming down to the argument of 
if you have Hercules, think about Hercules as a demigod. He's not a ma it, His strength isn't magical. It's his innate being, right? That's just who he is, and so that's the what avatar. Ryan's doing, you're right? saying the avatar wasn't picked; it was created. Effectively, yeah. Oh, well, that's that's stupid. <laughs> I, I, that that would be my argument again against yeah. it. It's like, well, it might not be able to cast spells and be aggressive in that sense. It doesn't necessarily. It probably wouldn't negate its inherent natural uh, divinity. I guess call it, or like, the, yeah. yeah. I wouldn't that say that. Her, yeah, I wouldn't say that Hercules would lose its strength walking into an anti magic field. Um, so, I don't know that a, god, a, a divine entity would either, right? So, it would still be a fight either way with it. So, what if we that's drop the... the big crystal on it? Yeah. And it's a magic crystal. Anyway, I just that's I thought maybe it was more imbued rather than uh, you know already having yeah. it. So, I get yeah. you. Fair enough. I thought my shirt was on backwards for a second. <laughs> You're not cutting off the source. It is. A piece of the source. So, then, what we're essentially kind of going towards now, then, at this point, is we're going to lock the Tabrask in the force field and ambush the Avatar after we fucked with it. So, we're going to trap it between the Tabrask and us, I think, is the goal here. Or we could just wait out, we could hide, and yes, see if it comes and opens up with that thing with the Tabrask. Well, yeah, exactly, and that's what yeah. I'm saying. So, yeah. the so Tarrasque... really would... wants the Mithril, right? Well, we've discovered... Uh, I guess we should bring you up yeah, to speed. Yeah, bring him up to speed. Um, so, we have discovered documents and papers within the lab that we were in, in Ariel Arthas' room, that told us that it, the Mithilar does have the ability to control the weather, and that that is likely for leagues on end. So, it is our assumption that this Mithilar was used by... Um, it can be used by up to eight mages i believe or eight yeah, spellcasters eight, yeah eight or less um, yeah. and they can essentially control the weather in a large area it wasn't very descriptive of how large the area is but we're assuming that that's why the weather in just the 10 towns have gotten bad and that they're going to use this kind of as their launching point to kind of try to spread it over the entire plane so they've that only been able climate to climate change exactly not real, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's effectively what, what our train of thought is, is that we just stop the Mithilar from being an everlasting winter. It'll attract the person who wants it to be a winter, and then we will put the Tarrasque in the force field, so that when they come to open up the force field, they're ambushed by a Tarrasque on one side, and then we ambush them from the back side on the other side. And hopefully, the Tarrasque eats the Mithlar, and when it goes back to its dimension, you say, maybe, if it gets defeated or what have you. I think they don't leave until they die. Well, and... Well, that's going to be a problem we're going to have to figure out later. Yeah, see, this, the, the problem that we're, we're kind of have, going to have an issue with is how do we get rid of the Tarrasque afterwards? So if it chases us out, though, we can always hit it with Comet, and then we're all in the clear. Ooh. No, it won't chase us. It's way faster than there. Yeah, How would it, you know yeah it's, not, it's not an option of It's not an option it's of chasing. It's a gigantic monster. So yeah. here's, here's the second part of it, though. We also have that obelisk to go back in time. If we have that obelisk to go back in time so we can get away from the test or uh, whatever creature, go back in time, and then we can get the fuck outside before it so that when it does come out, we can hit it with Comet. Why don't we just go it. back in time and summon it in the ancient natural and have it destroy the city? Then none of this will have ever happen. We don't know how far back we can actually go back in time. Yeah, we haven't found out what the cycling is, right? Because with them having to come back and redo the magic to, to keep the winter going and that sort of thing, we're not sure exactly what the time frame is for that. I also just of a, am of the opinion of why the fuck do we need to use time travel if we don't really need to use time travel? Realistically, the only thing that time travel really would do in this instance, at least in, from my understanding of the situation, is it would reverse the damage that has been done to the Ten Towns as a result of the Everlasting Winter and the Dragon that went through there. 
Hey, right. you know what would be kind of cool though too? So let's say we went back in time and it did take us to before, let's say the, the city fell. We could actually hit the city with, since we wouldn't have the Tarrasque to, to be going down on it at that point, we could hit the city with a comet and it could crash something. So. Yep. Hey, how about we just go back in time and get the Sports Almanac and become billionaires? <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that's exactly it, really. It's like... You, no <laughs> you mean Biff? <laughs> no, I, no, I meant Trump. Because <laughs> I swear that's who he is. He's uh, modeled after. So. He's Biff? <laughs> <laughs> Big butthead. <laughs> anyway, I think it's a great plan, so we should go do it. I'm just having reservations about how we get rid of the Tarrasque. Well, like I said, we'll just go back in time, and if it doesn't work, you know, it's like one of those things, like, uh, if we go and we crash the city before that happens, then that would have never happened, so we never actually would have went there. So we create a new timeline that we never would have actually went, so then I never would have got turned into a bear, I never would have got my leg cut off. Yeah, see, this is where, like, uh, this is why I don't like bringing time travel into anything, is because it just build we weird, uh, brings in too many weird hypothetical situations where you're like, yeah, or, but then this doesn't happen, and this doesn't happen, and this doesn't but happen. But here's like, the thing, well, though, too. It would have all had to have happened anyway for us to actually have that happen. So technically, if we went back in time, whatever we do is going to cause the exact same thing because we would have went back in time to try to stop it, but in fact caused it because we can't get out of this loop. There's no way to break it. Uh, that's not how it worked in the last campaign, if I remember correctly. Well, truthfully, that's how time travel should work. Like, <laughs> this is like Terminator time travel. This yeah. depends yeah. on the interpretation of time travel. John Connor yeah, has it... to send his dad back in time. So your guys' interpretation of time travel is you can change things and then things Depends Change. which God controls time. So it'd be like if you go back in time and uh, you make sure that you weren't born, would you be able to go back in time again to make sure that you weren't born? Or will that never have happened so then you'd be born anyway? Yeah? Does it make the multiple loops? Are you Paradox. talking about multi, multi, multiple universes where it maybe in one it happens but in the other one it doesn't? You're just yeah, talking about the. the um grandfather paradox yes who's a, yeah. who's a really good artist here we'll get them to draw a picture of all of us just standing together <laughs> <laughs> and then when we get back in time and do things we just look at the picture and see if anybody starts disappearing <laughs> that's kind of a good that's oh a my god yeah i love that so okay lilith will do that tell uh, tell you. your sister to draw that <laughs> one of you one of you starting to disappear <laughs> Ryan, you should totally do that, because that's that's hilarious. I love that, but that's only if, well, the, when I'm sure it's gonna happen. When we go back in time and we start doing stuff, and then we start disappearing. I love also, it. Also, just feel like we're trying to use a Tarrasque for no reason. So, I like the idea of the Tarrasque. Everybody likes the idea of using a Tarrasque, but the execution <clears throat> not where it fails, and that's the scary part. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's why I say we just we leave it inside that force field. We stick around that uh, our time travel thing, and if things go sideways, we get the hell out. And then we make sure we look at that picture to make sure you know see who's disappearing right away. So yeah, cool. time, time. Wait, if it's um, the methylar that causes the force field, and then it eats the methylar, then there's no force field. Then there's the task with methylar coming. That's why we are waiting outside or that. It's that a task that moves around with the force field around it. Oh, like, yeah, shit. Just... <laughs> or does that, that happen? Because that was the other thing that we were talking about is if the Tarrasque eats the Mithalar, then it's just going to be wandering around with a giant winter storm going on around it. Right? Or in its guts. Right? So, like... Either way... That, was, that was the fun amazing. thought that I had about it. It's just yeah. having this Tarrasque wandering around with a giant winter storm wherever it comes from. But... that And it came as an insane idea, and yet... We're almost talking about summing it seriously now, so it's like. Right. Anyway, let's find out what this time frame is on the force field. And uh, what right. it can stand against. It can it stand, I'll ask you, can it stand against like a Tarrasque? Is, it, is that you know, something so that I will be able to beat away? Uh, Tarrasque. 
Does it actually go under the able ground? to get through? I'm not sure. We've never tested it against something that strong. It's mostly been to protect against teleportation and um, other wizards, humans, the can occasional you, elf you, that makes it up here. Or can you can you dig under here? it here, under the force field? Well, yes. Well, that's the stupidest force field you could ever have, isn't it? Says the, the... Then we could have just... We wouldn't have had to do all that shit. We could have dug under the force field. She says, there used to be a mountain beneath the force field. Yeah. This, this city is built on the bottom side of a mountain. They would have had yeah. to dig through an entire mountain to get to it. Not really, because you just come up to the force field, and again, you just you literally make... You go down... And you go under, and you come up. So you probably do fifteen feet of stone to get yes, but your super that horses. would that would require someone to not be seen by <laughs> a few hundred wizards, Dwarves, people who buddy. were actually Dwarves. alive in the city at the time. Had we thought about this before, we probably no. could have done it. We could have probably Isn't... just spent a few days tunneling instead of. <laughs> This is all you do. She, she says building, um, right? the stone it's is also very um, oh, yeah. strong. It's the black stone. You yes. just El Chapo it. You buy one of the surrounding warehouses and then you just yeah, come and you up just, to the warehouse. <laughs> and you, <laughs> and you, yeah. And you, yeah. It's like breaking into a bank vault. You're just getting your gold, right? Yeah. Anyway, I still think let's go ahead with the plan. I'm just scared of summoning. Like I'm just. We summon it. We make sure Lilith is as close to it as possible, and we're back near the obelisk. I don't know if that's. Wait, we're getting rid of Lilith. Who's? I never said anything no. about getting rid of Lilith, but somebody's well, got to summon it. And she's here. the one. She's the minute. one that has the thing, right? <laughs> also, she can't summon it though. Actually, anybody can. They're special scrolls. Oh, we were having this, we were having this discussion earlier yeah. about that. The, and who can use the scrolls? The Tarask and um, Comet ones are not specifically spells, so it doesn't have to be a specific uh, caster class to use we them. We wouldn't so be able what? to doctor it, would we? So we could summon up like a Gimp Tarask or something? Uh, You're going to no. put a name of a Tarask on there? We want, you know, Bobby Tarask. He's the one with like a. Let's make this Tarask have like an extra chromosome. <laughs> uh, that would probably be even worse. But anyway, we I digress. So I want to create some havoc. So I suggest like either if you guys aren't on board with the Tarask, we can just go back in time. We're gonna blow blow the place out of the sky with the comet. Oh, or if you guys want, I'll go back in time. You just give me the comet spell. I'll what go back guess, in time. Steve, Steve, if either one of those is a bad idea. And I'll, he'll tell me I'm right most of the time. Well, And I'll blow it out of the sky. You still can't. The problem is is that, again, A, we're not outrunning a Tarrasque, and B, you need open air to summon it, the comet. But, like, if we go back far enough in time, this is the... If it is, if it goes back to when it's actually flying in the air, right? Then I'll just blow it out of the sky. And you guys can sing my story for everyone to go and I can go back to my gods. Yeah, but now you're trying to summon a comet onto a floating city that is full of mages. Yes. Well, hypothetically, you, you could see what the problem too. with that is. If we just, uh, I, I don't think they would see it coming. Door. Well, they'd see it coming, but too late. I you can see it through a dimension door, right? You understand that these dimension uh, door. I don't think you can see through it because it's an immediate thing. It's not a door that you uh, hold open. What's the one? What's the portal one that you can walk through? Well, Crippman, you're yeah. making me go back to the terrace. That's um, a better sounding one. Nothing really matters. Nobody has that spell, anyways. Yeah, no one has it. What spells do I have? We got to do something, guys. We've been stuck on this Tarrasque thing for too long, I think. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Let's just do it. It was it was just a stupid idea. I didn't mean to sit 
and to shoot the shit about while we were waiting for Ryan. I didn't mean to develop into an actual thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, Why don't I just sit down and I'm going to do just, a level uh, 3 divination? Why don't we just summon um, Drask in the bottomless pit? There, then you can summon it and you can just let it fall forever. <laughs> we have a bottomless pit here somewhere? Yeah. Can't There's we go throw the mithril down it? What? Can't we throw the mithril down it? Yeah, actually, yeah, you probably could. Actually, yeah. That's probably a great idea. So let's do that then. We'll go change the weather and we'll throw the fucking mithril down this so, bottomless pit. It's gonna go like, uh. We have to calculate how long it would take it to stop affecting everything. <laughs> Which, does it does it matter? It's eventually going to stop affecting it, unless it's not yeah. a bottomless pit and it'll, just, it'll keep affecting <laughs> it at the bottom. It's a lot harder, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, but we just uh, I don't we just can dump we just the change the weather and then dump it in the pit and then yeah. um, then we're good. Ooh, Hold on, no, all no. right. We have two, change. Um, I have an idea. We have two, I'm, I'm coming up we have with two bags of holdings, don't we? I think Are you going to put those together with the... If not, right right on top of the thing? I might be able to shoot the Mithilar into the Astral Sea and then it's no longer a problem. You want to try that first? How, how far does that explosion come out when you uh, do that? It's not, really, it's not even 100% though. Yeah. I'm down with it. Let's try it. And then we, if it doesn't so, work, let's throw it down the well. And then if that doesn't work, uh, we're going to bring out the Tesseract. And if that doesn't work, hey, Bob. My, uh, Did you get your food? Oh, my yeah. thought on this is is that we dump the Mithlar in the hole, or we change the weather, we activate the anti-magic field from the Mithlar, and then dump it in the hole. Hey, what about Again. that uh, anvil that eats magic? Why don't we just yeah. blow that thing up by making it eat the Mithilar? It, it That doesn't work. Yeah, it's we, an artifact, right? It's we'll an artifact, right. yeah. Okay. Because if we dump it in the hole with the it's agit, and if it, with a magic, with its anti-magic field, no one can use fly around it, no one can use teleport around it, no one can do anything around it for as long as it's in... That's a good at, idea. Well, it's, well it should it, close it's, the, the hole up anyways, because it's a pocket plane. Is the hole a pocket plane? We don't know. It has to be. We never determined what the fuck the hole was. We just kicked some rocks down. Well, let's start. Let's do it anyway. I like dumping. Is that a yeah. bottomless pit? Is it a pocket plane? Oh, yeah. It says <laughs> it's... <laughs> You've got a whole bunch of people from this city. Um, she says... Let me just find that place. Because if it's a pocket plane, you throw that in there, and then you throw your bag of holding uh, in there, boom, you're done. If that didn't work, True. you throw another bag of holding in there, boom, you're done. Says, and then even uh, it is not a bottomless pit. It's a couple hundred feet deep. Uh, shit. Is there any way to make it a bottomless False pit? False advertising. Mm, not without magics that I don't know how to do. Would somebody necessarily be able to find it if we threw it down that well? You know, put a top on the well? The you mean to move the mythalar? Yeah. That would be a great feat of engineering to move it. Yeah, well we got the greatest engineer that ever lived and I'll point it at you. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure we got that float spell too. She says the Levitate base it. on oh. which the mythalar floats itself is 50 feet across. So it might not even fit in the hole. I don't remember how big the hole was. Shit. That, that makes me sad now. I wanted to dump it down the bottomless pit. Well, looks like we're going back to the first one. First one's well, the best one. So far. Unless we have old school rules, the stupid bag of holding only takes creatures within 10 feet of it. Which is a random location in the astral plane. 
if you guys want, I could ask a, a god about that. I could do some divination and see if it would work. Yeah, I don't hold your god in high standing. <laughs> My god tells the truth. He may not be one that you want to be around, but... Uh, <laughs> it's a little bit scary shit. Even my god has her plans. My god doesn't give a fuck about us. So that's probably the best person to get an answer from. Because uh, the, on the only other, other, other thing that we could possibly do is rebuild this. Oh, I guess I could. We should tell Iggy this too. Part of the stuff that we found were schematics for the city. And like basically, we found the operating manual for the city, as far as so, I understand. Yeah. So could we start it up again and get it flying? Because yeah, it would said like not Maybe. only would it change the weather, we could be able to because it is one of the things to fly it, right? Wait, how high does yeah. this thing fly? Uh, probably pretty damn high. Isaac. Let's do this. Oh, I'm so. This is even better. Let's fly it, and then we we'll just. just Take the off. city and here to be rebuild it. Eh. How about we just move it to Baldur's Gate? And we'll, can you imagine how much money we're gonna get if we get that? There? That's exactly it. Is if we put something like this in the hands of, if we contacted the right people, we could put this in a position where yes. we would be made lords yes. of a city. Could we fly to the moon? Right now, Brad's like, you guys are fucking up all my plans, bro. <laughs> <laughs> let's just fly it into the sun. All right, well, let's just go down to the Midlar anyway, and let's let's literally just attune to it and see if it can start flying. We might as well change the weather and just see if we can get up. Okay. Are you guys going to dump the uh, um, dump the 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 ashes anywhere? Oh, I forgot about the ashes. Oh, yeah. The... So, uh, Lilith's That's creature, is that a, is that a, a, a another plane piece. creature? So does it come from another plane? Uh, no. Uh, well, so let's say if I get Stiff Steve to eat the ashes, and then I dismiss him, will he go with him? Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Well, we're stuck with it for right now, so let's just take it with us. Yeah, but the ashes are going to recon. Leave it in the too. corner. And you also don't have Stiff Steve right now. Yeah, I gotta get a body. Will the ashes Can I use the ashes? <laughs> Where they'll yeah, reconstitute wherever it. they happen to be. Yeah, because we, we haven't actually. Because we haven't actually killed his phylactery, as far as I understand. So. Does she know where the phylactery is? That our friend? No. No. No glitch worth his salt would tell anyone where his phylactery was. You don't have to have a forest cage handy, do you? No. I do not, unfortunately. That was useful. I should speed it to the dress. Yeah. <laughs> it's not a bad idea. Our, uh, mo our solution to this whole campaign is just feed it feed to the dress. Now, what's worse, everlasting winter or rampaging dress? Right, pick your at, poison. You can't be at, choosy. <laughs> <laughs> at least I mean, an army can kill it. Yeah. How far See? away are we from uh, Waterdeep? From Waterdeep? Very far. It'll take a long time before it destroys anything we care about. Yeah. So, let's think about it this way, guys, okay? We go change the weather, right? Maybe see if this thing flies. If we don't get it to fly, we come out again. We summon the Trask inside. We oh. hook it to the thing so we can basically just get out of here. Whether or not it's going to be 10 hours before, 100 hours before, 10 years before, the Trask isn't going to be around us. We're going to be able to walk out of here. We're not going to be able to find a, a king, a god's avatar chasing us as well. We can just walk out, 
wait till later we'll find out what year it is wait till you know some you could even tell uh whatever city that we need a big freaking army to come and kill us ross because we know it's coming take care of that and then eventually you know everything's all good and gold right Kingsport this? is kind of stuttering, but says we could tell them we don't know where the terrace came from. Well, exactly. Yeah, we, we just know, know it's there. Well, we'll just say that it was a good one. Yeah. Everything we dies just, from We falling. know that it was uh, the God's Avatar, whatever it is, right? <laughs> oh. Let's you did miss, uh, Iggy, you did miss uh, Deckard rolling a natural 20 to intimidate Kingsport into not having a conscience about summoning the Tarrasque and it killing people. <laughs> it was great too because I told him we were going to meditate so we got him down into the position to meditate and I was going to say this is how you kill your conscience so that you don't have to worry about things anymore and while he was at his eyes closed I went and grabbed something heavy and I snuck up behind him and when he opened his eyes I told him I was going to bash his skull and if he didn't Kill his <laughs> yeah. no. And it worked. It Everything worked dies from falling, so why don't we just fly, fly up, up as sky. high as possible and then some of the Tarasca and then it'll just fall to death after it does whatever. We can keep talking or we can start. Let's start with going and changing the weather. I vote changing the weather and see if we can fly the city. Yes, Let's and start then after there. that, we, we move to the next step, which would be summoning right. the Tarasca. And then the next step, if everything is going well, wrong, we go I back in time. The, I you don't think a comet that... could destroy a Nifilar? No, we already tried that too. Uh, could, we, yeah. uh, could we overload it, the Nifilar? Your cat's well, loud. Yeah. Wow. Wow. He wants to go outside. So let him. Of course. Oh, I'll let him out of the room. Still be over there though. Just do it. We can't see you anyway. Hold on, my dog. Everyone's pets are going crazy. Mine are quiet for once. I wouldn't have provided a Tarask summoning thing if we didn't want us to summon it. <laughs> it's That's both fun. of those scrolls are in the. They're not homemade ones. They are in the adventure. Yeah, we could actually. Just let her rip, and then use the bag of holdings to escape into the astral plane somewhere. I, I don't think floating through the astral sea just randomly is... Well, it's a random reason. location, so we might get lucky. Yeah, I don't... You might I don't... get lucky. Also, you don't really float. You can actually kind of teeter yourself around. Yeah. Swim. And you don't age. I also think you don't need to eat. Nope. Don't need to eat or drink or sleep. So eventually you'll get somewhere. Eventually, if you go in the right direction, you might end up going just enough off course that you never reach anything. What are those giant one-eyed things? Oh, the uh, astral dreadnought. Yeah, as long as an astral dreadnought doesn't find us, we'll be fine. Or some gif, or the Yankee who want to uh, cut your silver string. Because even if you're there. In, uh, uh, even if you're there physically, you've still got a silver, uh, silver cord. Unless you cut your own cord. Checkmate. <laughs> you go anywhere. It's a... Uh... Yeah, so anyways, we'll at least start, and we'll approach the middle floor, see if we can get the city floating. I think we can start with that for sure. Okay. Okay, did we, uh, did we do it yet? Nope. Where the heck are we? You guys... So you decided not to do anything with the, uh, ashes right now, right? <sighs> we'll just I feel... leave them. I don't yeah. want to just leave them. Can we... Um... Do does uh? Why don't we just split them into like four different places and like, like you have a little bit here and as we're going we throw one out a little bit of a window there, take one here, hide it because put it into a cupboard there. The body would just reconstitute off of one set of the ashes. Well, it doesn't really matter. 
No. Okay. As long as a, as long as the phylactery exists, as far as I understand, the body can reconstitute even if it's from nothing. Is that gonna like T one thousand it? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. It might take it a little bit longer to get the ashes to go back together. Or it'll just be a really small spell flying around to the find the rest of it. What or something could just get eaten holding the ashes by the grass and the I was gonna say Um if we can put it in one of the brain jars and just see whatever the heck that does to it. <laughs> I mean you could have done like, that, yeah. When you went to get like, Veneranda, just dump it into the brain jar. Just dump it into a, one of the random brain jars and see what ends up happening with it and just keep it sealed up. Because yeah, <laughs> it's it it's a preservative of some sort. That's true. So, yeah. I'm down. Did that lock up the brain jar? Boom. Unless somebody back. wants to eat it. I don't want to have a skull reconstitute my guts, but I was going to think <laughs> that we could have our friend that we feed, we pay with food, she could eat it. But then I don't want to have her have a chest burster come out. Right? Yeah. Well, next to you, a, a demi lich skull For comes my... out. Pops out of your chest. We've already You're had one. You killed me. That was Bilbo, wasn't it? In the uh, alien? Uh, His name was Bilbo. No, no. Bilbo Baggins, right? No, it An wasn't. Uh, it wasn't him. No, no original no. Lord of the Rings Bilbo. No, it wasn't him. It was uh, William Hurt. I wouldn't yet play on words. I love it. <laughs> Anywho, we're off track. We put him in a skull thing, locked it up, or a brain jar, okay. locked it up. Oh no, Bilbo is the android, right? Yes. Bilbo was, was Bilbo was yeah. the uh, android. Ash. Um, did you want to take an hour and a little bit of extra time to go to the prison and find one of the bodies to get Stiff Steve back, or no? No, I want to get this done. Okay. Well, why don't you try one of the brains in the jars? Can that turn into Stiff Steve? It's a body it up so yeah not a brain so you guys start walking up there is a crystal sphere glowing that is up ahead of you as you are walking between the gigantic columns the the almost um, tree trunk like columns that make up the ones that are holding the spire up aloft Ooh, sorry, Zute. and as you walk up you start to see shapes as you get close enough to see things other than the bright light from the sphere and uh, there are a bunch of people here two of them are next to the sphere and appear to be doing something well this just ruins half of our plans knowing that people are here now <laughs> yes so i don't think we should talk to them i think we should technically just straight up uh them. and um because they're probably part of the plan anyway we just want to get this done do they look like any of the, uh... Or are they brain jars? Uh, they look like the people who were with, um... Uh... Shit, now I can't even remember his name. Is that the guy that attacked us right outside of Severed. from a different school? Was that Severed? Yeah, no, it was yeah. the people that came in behind us, yeah. So they're the cultists of Kostichi, likely. Alright, stealth. Fifteen. You're funny. Let's go up. Straight up kill. Um, how far out are they from us, or like? Um, so currently you guys are twenty-five, fifty, seventy-five. You're about hundred feet away. But this is right. a, this is a very big area that you can get lost in. I see. Is that gonna like burn us? Have a laser thing coming around? Um, so it is not a 
laser. It is um, a uh, what's the best way? Have you played uh, um, Dead Space? Yeah, yeah, all of them. Uh, in the first one, where it's got the the place where they've got the uh, asteroid that they're pulling the minerals off, and it's got the two big arms that move back and forth around it. That's what this is. It's just a, a metal arm that is not touching the sphere, but seems to be holding it in place and is spinning around. So okay. it is going above the... Uh, it's probably about... The top of it is probably about 30 feet in the air. Let's shoot it. Can I ask uh, a quick question here? Mm -hmm. So, uh, if, let's say a wall of force. It says you can do a wall of force and it appears in any rotation it can be free floating or resting. Uh, you can form it into a hemispherical dome or sphere with a radius of the 10 feet. Can, can, let's say I make the wall of force, can I keep making it smaller? Um, once you place it, I think it's there. No, when you cast it, you cast it. Yeah. Oh, shit. So I was hoping I could do the wall of force, and then I'd just put some people in it, and then I'd squish it. <laughs> no. it that would be really cool, but if I don't think do you can. That, you have to make a small one. First, you have to uh, reduce them large, reduce them. And then you put the force ball over them, and then you let the reduce run up. It's not a bad idea. By the way, guys, I can do a uh, wall of force in, uh, with my staff power. Actually, it's a surprisingly useful stuff. Yeah. I also have globe of invulnerability. So. Which I never did use, but I used a lot of wall of forces, and I had that. <clears throat> yeah. We could have been really cheesy with the Wall of Force when we had all the chase scenes with the uh, cars in hell. Oh yeah, I just dropped oh it behind us. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, I didn't do that though. It yeah. so, would have been so lame. That would have been great. It would have been cool been, to like, do it using like it once, once. twice would have been great. Yeah, exactly. Would have been perfect to do it once or twice. I was thinking about making ramps and stuff too. <laughs> so, so you, this thing you told me around, around. I would have let you guys do that. What's this thing spinning around again? It's just an arm above, uh, that's holding the um, Mithilar in place. The Mithilar is that sphere in the center. Oh, it's a giant so, little penis. So if I put a wall of force to block that thing from spinning, what would happen? You <laughs> don't know. Really interesting. Do it. Do I'm you want do to it. still be able to use the Mithilar? I don't know. Do Because if it shuts down all totally, then fuck it, well, right? Like, if you somehow blow it up, maybe it would just return everything to normal. That's it probably true would. as well. It probably would. Well, do you guys want to see some fucked up shit? Technically, this is you. You're not really talking about This it. is you. 120 feet. Boom. Uh, wall of force. Okay. Straight down in the middle there. So eventually, <laughs> it's not there yet. But it's gonna eventually come around to it, right All at the right. bottom. I'm gonna have it come over, and it's gonna be stuck to the ground. So basically, I don't want that thing to move. It'll just get caught. At six o'clock. At uh, yeah, six o'clock. Six. Okay. Um. All you guys see is me point my staff. <laughs> point the staff in a power word, and we're just sitting there for like five, six seconds, and then we see it stop and like. What did you do? I don't know, man. I don't know what that thing is. No, I don't think anybody would ever know. I feel like that's interesting. It just decided to stop. And then I've never seen something like can this Can I get that? Yes. All I can think of now is my probably in my head. I'm hearing myself go, "Run away!" <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, what size? Were you looking at for the force field? The wall? Let's see how much I can do. Uh, it's supposed to be 10 feet. Okay, so it's only 10 feet? 
You can uh, stretch it up though. You can make it smaller or thinner and stuff as well. Look at this. That's a spherical though. It doesn't really say. You can put it in the air, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Yeah, well, I would have put it so that basically it's gonna stop that, whatever it is. It's just gonna hold it all in right. place. They're all made up, it says it's made up by, or even the shape of a flat surface made up of 10 by 10 foot panels. Each panel must be continuous with another panel in any form. The wall is a quarter inch thick. And it'll last for up to 10 minutes. Okay. So, that happens. Uh, let me get back into here. And if those guys happen to kind of crowd around that, see what's going on, I'm going to fire, I'm going to do a fireball. Or, yeah, fireball. Uh -huh. <laughs> wow, why did it stop? Okay, so a radiant, so a hemisphere or dome, hemispherical dome or a sphere with a radius of 10 feet, or a flat surface made up yep. of 10, 10 foot 10. by 10 foot panels. Yeah. So it could be a 100 foot long wall or a 10 foot diameter sphere, or 10 foot radius sphere. I'll probably do the wall. Okay. Big old, big old wall. Like Make it like a wall from there to us. <laughs> Might be able to do that. It's supposed to be a hundred feet. I could do what? Yeah. That's not oh, even a bad make, idea. Let's because... make a giant wall as far as I can put it down. I <laughs> need to find. I have a force field. But I'm. There we go. There it is. Okay. It took long enough to find it. Okay, so you want this to be a, a hundred we'll just, foot we'll just long? Sure, to why where? not? Huh? Uh, just straight down. Just straight down to you guys? It helps you know it. what? You know what might really fuck it up? Here you go. It says here, nothing can physically pass through the wall. It is immune to damage except for disintegration, right? Um, if it cut, this is where I'm wondering about it. If it, cu it cuts through a creature's space when it appears, it is pushed to the side. So if it cuts through the space of the mithril, will it be pushed to one side? So technically, no. would no, it won't. Okay, so never no, mind. It's not a creature, it. so okay, we'll just put it down like a hundred feet down. A hundred feet by what though? Well, it doesn't really say. Like, I could probably, it just says I can make a flat uh, surface. 10, 10 foot up to 10. Panels. Oh, it's up to 10, 10 by 10 foot panels. Yeah, 10, 10 oh. by 10 panels, yeah. How big, how big is that high? Um, so 10 feet high. I mean, you could do it 10 feet wide and 100 feet high. You could make it like a little stepping stair thingy. And then the last one just stops it. I just want to, I don't know, I just want to stop it, so... However many it takes to stop that whole thing. Uh, Let's do it actually, 50 it feet by 20, 20 feet high or something like that. 50, 50 by 20? By, yeah. Okay. Two, three, four, five. So that yeah, that'll that work. There. So 50 by 20, that stops it. And everyone knows that something's going on. So um, I'm going to roll a whole bunch of perception checks. So it is at this moment that the entire party looks at Deckard and says, what did you do? It is an invisible wall, so technically they would not be able to see it, and they wouldn't have known anything was happening until it came over to that side and stopped. So well, how long have they been watching the thing do rotations, and then it just exactly stop? it just stops suddenly, so they know something's up. So everybody's like scratching their heads, looking at this thing. Okay. And as they're looking at me, I'm gonna stealth and start moving away to hide behind something. 
I'll run behind one of these big things. Whatever these big things are. So, um, that is three of them know exactly who did this. Uh, neither of, yeah, neither of the ones who are in the middle casting, but they do shout, um, find who stopped it. And... Let's get some uh, initiative. Does anyone want to take uh, Lilith for me? I can't figure it out, I'm sure. Okay. I'll just roll her uh, initiative. I, I don't know if I can do nice. this for her. Okay. So she's got 13 and... All right. I'm just gonna tell you guys, uh, I gotta concentrate on this, so uh, protect <laughs> me. <laughs> All right, so you know you should use some of that footage to just cover yourself. What's up? You should just put a little box around you and then extend it. <laughs> yeah, would have been would have been smart at the time. Um. So, yes. It is the cultists, and three of them point you guys out. And uh, what can the cultists do? A few things. Um, fourth level. Ranges. Okay. So G, H. F and B 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 and they are going to actually they are all going to uh, shield of faith themselves and then uh, Deckard, you're up uh I'm just going to get so, behind everybody and try to get out of the way. Getting further okay. away. Hey, buddy. Because I can't do anything. So. You are not covered in poop again, are you? No, good. Oh, and now you're running away. <laughs> well, you just embarrassed them on. <laughs> <laughs> he has started crapping in the corner of the litter box, which against means... Against the wall, probably, right? Not against the wall. But he digs a hole in the corner, and then he faces the hole. So his poop comes down and gets him on the legs, instead uh, of pooping into the hole. So, one day he'll learn, right? He'll, he'll learn. Bigby's got to teach him how to, how to <laughs> crap, and how to clean himself after he gets shit on himself. <laughs> rather, than, rather than having three baths this week... <laughs> oh my god. The first time he kicked he kicked shit onto me. <laughs> oh. Um so you said you are hiding behind everyone. Well, I'm gonna try to move away too. I'm gonna try to get as far away as possible. So as I'm behind people I'm gonna move back and forth. Uh, thirty, okay. Are you going to do anything else? I cannot yeah, as long as it's not concentration, you can still cast a, another spell. It, it is concentration. No, as long as the spell that you want to cast isn't concentration. Oh, isn't concentration. Um, like fireball. Fireball is not a concentration spell. Even if it comes from my staff? Even if it comes from your staff, it's not concentration. You're concentrating oh, cool. on the wall of force. But everything okay, else... So I, got, I, I got 150 feet. Can I hit any of them with 150 feet? Oh, yeah. Yeah, who? Can I, 
Who do you want to hit? I want to hit as many as possible. Um, what's the size of... What's the size of Fireball? 20 foot uh, radius, right? Yeah. If you run out of points, you can, you can depower your stuff. No, i still got 10 points left if I use a Fireball. Uh, uh, my Fireball is going to be 10d6 damage. 15, 20... Okay, so... Um, 1, 1... You can get two there. You can get. You can just get three. I will get three. Then. Okay. So. Um, I guess it doesn't I get, matter. I get a plus two to attack and damage rolls made with it while using it. So what does that mean? A plus two bolts. So it's not a, an attack roll. Yeah, it's it not an dead. attack roll. Oh, my bad. Um, Wait, never mind. If you just fire bolts, yeah. Get uh, fire anyway. ball. Oh no, that's not what I want. I but I also said, oh, and spell discuss. attack rules. Okay, yeah, never mind. Um, it might guard. increase your spell to PC though. Because it's a plus two. Plus two pretty much to everything. I got plus two to my armor class with it as well. Does it say it increases your spell save PC? It uh, increases while holding it, I gain plus two to armor class, saving throws, and spell attack rules. I don't think it affects your DC then. Eight, fifteen, and okay. So that's one pass. What's your save DC? My spell save DC yep. is sixteen. Okay, so one passes, the other two fail. Thirty-nine damage. Alright. <laughs> so it's fail, fail, pass. So um one guy is engulfed in flame and drops as a uh, a set of stone armor with a skeleton inside as does a second one and then 39 damage divided by two is going to be 15 plus four so 19. all right and then, uh, so B and C are dead, D is not, and um, then next is the slot whose name I can't remember. Um, she is going to just casually 10, 15, 20. Um, yeah, she's close enough to throw um, two small balls of fire. Um, so, actually, 25, 50. Yeah, sure, she does need to get closer. Thirty. So, um, why is this not continuing down? What the hell? Uh, so that's a miss and a hit. So deals fifteen points of fire damage to G. Damage. All right. So this guy is at that. Uh, this guy is at that. Got to update it right here. There we go. Um, and then Vlin. Um. She is going to try to save some stuff. She doesn't want to use too much. So she will 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. And um, 
she is going to yeah she's not really close enough to get anyone with anyone anything anyway so just chill touch she can reach that's going to hit and that is 12 damage on each to that. Uh, I did turn on... That combat music was not very combat-y. <laughs> okay. So, next is um, the brain and jar... Oh yeah, Drum brought her, right? Yeah. So she. She doesn't have a lot of people. Yeah. Um. So. She can. Not do too much right now from where she is. So. Um, she's going to take a few steps. And she will also chill touch. Yeah, chill touch. And just hits. And does not do very much damage on that one. Um, that so was against Does it just look like a brain that appears beside it? They get touched by a brain? Or... <laughs> and... Well, actually, with... Um brain in jars they're no longer wizards it's all psionic so you guys don't see what happens you don't see like with uh the Lin, a hand a spectral hand grabbing them or whatever it happens to be they just take damage and blood starts coming out of his nose Ugh. um and then, Critman, you are up. So, there is a very big line from you to anyone. Yeah. Run! Um. So I'm gonna look over my. Uh, I'm gonna look to Iggy and be like, "Can you still do that thing where you make us fly?" Hmm. Uh... No. <laughs> <laughs> You're a bit disappointed. I you, like, do not have her prepared. I could make you climb like a spider. Yeah. Uh... Just gonna look at like I, I I appreciate it, but I don't think it's applicable in this case. Um, I'm going to cast. <sighs> oh, what are you at first level? I can make myself fly. <laughs> I'm going to cast Bless. Okay. Uh, at... Third level? Because that should give me five. Okay. Right? Because it's three and then up cast twice for another yep. two. So who's that going on? Um... So it's going to be myself, uh, Ola, um, Iggy, uh, probably Lilith, and um, 
and the slot. Alright. Uh, and then I'm going to use my full movement to stride forward. Um, which is... 30 feet. Uh, and I think that's the end of my turn. Okay. Um, Kingsport is going to <laughs> is going to squawk, look at you, Deckard, and then I'll wave him over. Go in a bit of a different direction. <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna stay near you guys, but he's going to uh, not be as close to you as you were just suggesting. <laughs> Doesn't trust me. No dice. Uh, now it is Iggy. I'm pretty far away from everything, right? Yeah. You are currently um, from you the closest creature is a hundred feet away. Um... I'll just move up 25 to, uh, I guess, in front of Valen there, just on a complete angle. Um, and then I'll tell Hot Rod to come right beside me, and I'll hold the action to shoot something if anything comes close enough to me. Okay. And that'll be so, it. Alrighty. And then Lilith. Um, do you just want to rotate taking your turn? Or do we just want to fucking discuss I'll it as a group? <laughs> Lilith, we need you to save your powers for when you're more here. <laughs> well, <laughs> Melissa's not going to be coming back. No, she's not. No, she said she doesn't know when she's going to be back, so... Yeah. Well, uh, we know we know who's sacrificing themselves for the greater good later. She did say she was okay with that as long as she knows how uh, Lilith dies. She's okay with Lilith uh, sacrificing herself. Lilith, we're gonna need you to give us all your gold and expensive <laughs> magic items. <laughs> I think that happened before already, so it doesn't really matter. Yeah, yeah she, she did do that it. once already. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, Severn did the same. Cause she is she at the point where she can cast a spell and still concentrate at it, right? On it, right? In wild shape. Yeah, in wild shape. Yep, she can continue to concentrate while she's in wild shape. Cause um, I'm thinking we do. Um... Oh, wait a second. That looked really cool for a second, and then... I've, I've, I've never really looked at druid spells in depth, so just give me a second here. Okay. Uh, we could just do the classic, uh, sea or fire. Yeah... Oh, um... She, she's not rested, by the way. There's, oh, she's, she's not? Missing a, she's missing a few spells. Well, song. you guys didn't get a long rest. You should have only had a short rest. Yeah, because I still have spells I'm missing too. Oh, well, so shit. I'm, I'm pretty sure because we fought. Yeah. But, sorry, guys. I have no idea what spells I used back then. Let me apply that, and uh, I'm pretty sure I was dead. That's a good thing I haven't used any of my other spells. Yep. Yeah. Um, 
So yeah, I thought that was that we had a long rest in between that fight as well, so I knocked off a couple of spells for myself. Okay. So, anyways, um Well time moves strangely here, so. Yeah. <laughs> some of us got spells and some of us didn't. <laughs> Some of us need less sleep than other guys. She could just <laughs> sit back and wait, too, because everything's, everything's so far away. Yeah, she could move forward. I mean, she's she's on uh, um, Nudicris's back. She could use him to move and hold an action. Uh, he has 40 move speed, so... Isn't it? I think what we end up doing here, we move, uh, rides up on Nudicris, up, um, his 40 feet, and then, I think we just go to a, um, a classic, and, uh, she will rain moonbeams down? Moonbeams doesn't need. Okay. Moonbeams don't need sight of... Doesn't need the uh, air. Does not need. Doesn't need open air or anything. Uh, I'm gonna. She will cast it at. Yeah, we can do like a. We can do a fourth level moonbeam here. Just keep moving it. Okay. Um. No, I can't cast it on her sheet. Uh, so I can't mark the spell off. But. Okay, I um, will do that. I would say cast it on the closest cultist. Okay. Um, on uh, the weaker or the bloodied or not bloodied one. Uh, go on C, I think. Okay. Or G or G. Like that. Okay. The, the one on the left side. Alrighty. Um. Uh, he will make a con save. 13, I'm pretty sure that fails. Uh, her save is- holy shit, her save is 19. The fuck? She, uh, she oh, put God. a lot of stuff in there. Plus, I think she's got one higher, uh, um... She's two higher- she's two levels higher than us. Oh, we yeah. are, apparently. Um, so it's 40, 10, so... What okay. level are you casting it at? Fourth. Fourth. Okay. So it's 40, 10. Okay. Uh... For 24 damage. Holy moly. Okay. G is incinerated. Perfect. And then... Her... Excellent. Yeah. Can use a um, bonus then, action on further turns to move it around. Yeah. But this bonus action, uh, she will transform. Okay. Because you can, because if you can concentrate on a spell, I'm sure you can move the spell. Or are we going to call yep. it a technicality? Yep, she can. <laughs> um, and I think she will, um, hop off new to Chris and turn into... God, that's crazy. Wait, can she become a Displacer Beast too? Can they just hang out as Displacer Beasts together? She can. I don't have that set in my list yet, but she can. Oh, it's in her list, sorry. I'm yeah, in her it's list. in her list. I don't have I don't have it set up in uh, Arkham Forge She's yet. she has can turn into a 
or it has something that they can throw, or has some kind of ranged or something, but I don't see anything. I don't think anything has range. No. I was, I was looking at the elementals, but it doesn't. Yeah. Anything ranged. That's okay. Um, I still like the idea of just having a couple of displacer beasts hang out with each other. <laughs> um, so that's what I would do. Huh? That's you're you're running her, so. All right. I vote displace. Uh, I vote we have a pair of displacer beasts hanging out to rush them on the next turn. I'm kosher with whatever you want to do. Okay. All right. All right. So I'm gonna have to. Just go and then it's easy for you, Brad, there. because we can just basically use Nudicris's stats. <laughs> yeah. To an extent. Um, they are monstrosity large. Sorry. It's okay. That took several minutes figuring out what was going on, so... Okay, I am gonna give her the... Um, you know what? What color is best? Red, white, or uh, normal black? Uh, normal black just to screw you up. Black. Okay, let's I agree. Go black. Black. But I'm giving her the one that is in displacing mode. Oh, fancy. There we go. So hide the normal one. Uh, Ungrade that and grab this. Up to there. Group them together and. Chris is 85, so 5, 85. There we go. Alrighty. And now we move on to Oya, who has no range, so we'll just run as fast as she bloody can. Um, she's got 30. 20, 25, 30, 30, 30, 35, 60, okay, and then Cadavix is going to, um, cast Mage Armor on himself, and 15, 20, 25, 30, and then you hear a howl of, uh, well, a howl of air, really. And uh, these guys Gonna get a little closer. They are also going to drop um, shield of faith on themselves. This guy, having lost two of his friends, thirty. I uh, will move this so that you can actually see. Uh, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60. And this guy is going to limp um uh he's going to go this way okay and then you guys hear a loud boom and um, so, 
as though they are coming out of the ground. 30. You see uh, off on this side. One of those big statue looking guys, uh, the Tomb Tappers, you've heard them called. And all of the, uh, um, you hear as they're coming, the, uh, one of the people shout, Truce until we kill these things. <laughs> Interesting. Um, I'm new. <laughs> and he is going to. Um. And sorry, how many of these appeared? There are two. Okay. Let's let them take care of it and just stay back. It's not an option here because um, this one appeared to our right side, if I believe oh, correctly. Shit. Yeah, to your left. Okay, oh, yeah, this one's on our left, yep. Yeah. Um, uh, he's going to... Yeah. He's going to keep concentrating on what he's doing. Um, you do feel a tremble in the ground. out a little bit and we're back at the top with B F and G F uh, or B F and H there is B okay B is going to uh, turn around and Try casting Sacred Flame on the Tomb Tapper, which I believe they are. Oh, no. Doesn't have anything special. So it is a dex save for 1d8. Which it passes, so it's fine. Um, this guy uh, is going to. Um, he's not sure what's going to happen to him, so he's going to cast a spiritual weapon. Uh, what is the distance? 60. Uh, so he's going to cast it uh, actually near to himself just in case he gets attacked by Oya. And then this guy has not seen the Tomb Tapper. 30 and is going to um, he's going to Sacred Flame uh, the nearest Displacer Beast which happens to be um, Lilith so let's get a deck save um, from a Displacer Beast need me to use one of the wild shapes too you can't do that right yeah no yeah no i can't um what is you guys did get a short rest so she got that back uh 
Um, custom mill, so nine. Uh, that is going to... 11. 11 is enough. I believe. They are... They're not the best spellcasters. Uh, well, Decker. Got two, plus two decks, and it does not appear to be um, proficient in deck saving throws, so... The Displacer Beast only has two decks? Yeah, apparently. Oh, wow. I'm surprised. It has 15... Yeah, it has 15 decks, so it's only hmm. plus two. Yeah. Um, right? That's why I was... Well, Deckard. Uh, okay. You see these guys ahead. One of them just tossed a flame at Lilith. Um, and... Uh, there's also a Tomb Tapper coming from your left. Okay, how far away is he? Because I might just go... He... I guess I didn't I didn't take off my spells, so I'm actually good at that point. So. He is 100 feet away from you. 100 feet away? Sweet. I'm going to do a level 5 uh, Psychic Lance. Okay. And, uh, yeah, so he's got to beat an Intelligence 16. All right. I don't think Int is really their thing. Oh, actually, Int is more their thing than, uh... Dexes. Oh shit. But he only rolled a 10. Alright. Okay, so he is going to get hit with. Sorry, just give me a second. Fifth level, I said, right? Yep. That's going to be. 86. 28 points of damage. Alrighty. And I'm still gonna start moving back towards my friends there, so towards Iggy, as close as I can get to Iggy. Okay. Alrighty. And then, uh, your green slot friend says, well, shit. And, uh,. She would know what needs to be known about these guys. So she knows not to use... Oh, yeah, he got hit, so he's incapacitated until the start of my next turn. He's incapacitated? Here we go. Let me look at it again. Uh, so if I hit him, target may make an intelligence saving throw on a failed save. The target takes 7d6 damage, or 8d6 with a 5, because uh, I did a level 5. Yeah. Uh, and is incapacit incapacitated until the start of your next turn. Oh, damn. Click on that so incapacitated. Let me know what that does to him. I, I can't really... doesn't really uh, click on... I think oh. it just... You can't take actions or reactions. It, it's okay. not, like, paralyzed. It's not that okay, bad. Okay, good. Oh, that's yeah, what I was no. checking. Um, so... so you can move, but you just can't attack, I suppose, right? Yeah. She says um i can't do anything against the tomb tapper it needs magic down. um yeah incapacitated is just no actions or reactions that's it okay so it can move but it can't act yeah so i'll just keep hitting him with that all right so um 10 15 20 25 30 so she's going to move closer to them up there and Valin is going to say well if you can't hurt them what is your use and then we'll uh, chill, chill touch <laughs> <laughs> So she does need to move um, three, four, five. Five. And we'll chill touch for a 19, which hits. So deals 13 damage. Which brings this guy down to that. 
And then your brain in a jar friend um, says, well, all of my stuff is uh, a little bit brainy as well. Can only really do what you just did there, young lady. And we'll also chill touch it. And we'll miss I, this time. I love that the brain referred to Valin as a young lady. <laughs> the brain is a couple thousand years old. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I, like, I, I get that, and I just, it just makes me laugh, because Valin is probably a few hundred years old. Based on, our, on my best guest, estimates. Well, I think you guys did see how she looked very fatigued and a few more wrinkles after she made the candles. Yes. Yeah, it is somewhere. safe to assume that she's actually younger than she looks. Well, shit. Yeah. That's okay. She's probably like in her 30s. Um, Crippman, you're up. Alright. Um, where am I relative to them? So that's to our left side. Where's the other yeah. tomb tapper? The other Rebels. one is yeah. way up here. Okay, it's way on the other side. Okay. Yeah. Um. I'm going to. fight is set up so it's kind of awkwardly for a melee character it is yeah um okay i'm going to shout to iggy to help me take care of this other one help me take care of this one on the left um to iggy and deckard um and okay. valin and then i'm gonna look to lilith and say make sure you keep them at bay or like keep yourself in a good position where the cultists can't come after us afterwards um and i'm gonna move towards a and i'm gonna give i'm gonna tell oya and yeah um lilith to kind of keep their focus forward we'll take care of what's behind us and um okay kind of give everyone else the direction to look at this thing while we kill this thing and give have those two basically right. watch our watch our flank which is our front okay are you telling them um, to fight the cultists or just to keep it just on them? no just keep it not like just more or less protect our flank and if, okay. if they feel obligated to maim anyone that comes close to do so um and let us take care of that they're basically kind of trying to create a uh, line of scrimmage with them right okay <laughs> um and uh yeah i'll move towards a and then i'm uh with my maximum movement and then i'm going to cast bullshit spells at it um because oh shit wait what what was it weak to oh, i have to look this up now isn't it fire or is it weak to fire was it weak to fire uh, you were told fire and cold it is immune to. Ah, okay. I, where, I thought I had more information on this. Alright. Um. I did. 
didn't keep it. Interesting. Okay, well I'm gonna pew pew it. Um, with a sacred flame. Is that an action? What? Is that an action? Yeah. Okay. So you only use 30 feet movement then? Yeah, yeah, that's what I okay. said. I used my... Yeah. Um, okay, sorry. I thought you meant you used your full movement to get there. But 30 feet, and then you're using. That works. Uh, I'm not within 60 feet of it, though, am I? No, you're not. No, then never mind. Um, son of a bitch. <laughs> this is a very, very wide open area. Yeah, pretty much. That Tarask would have loads of room to yeah, roam. <laughs> I just don't want to have to deal with it. Yeah, I just don't feel like trying to deal with the Tarask afterwards. Um, I'm just going to summon my spiritual weapon because it's technically not concentration spell. Okay. Um, I'm going to summon it as far forward as I can, which is 60 feet, and then... Wait. The summoning is a bonus action, isn't it? Ha! So I can use my action to... Ha ha! Yeah, I can. I can use my action to move 60, my full 60 feet movement and then summon it a 60 feet further away from me okay. and probably bonk it on the head. I think. And then, yes, now it's within 60 feet, so you can drop it wherever the, and yeah. bonk And then the summoning it. action gives it the attack. The attack, well, yeah. Right. Yeah, okay. Bonk. Uh, 23 to hit. Oh, yeah. All right. It takes nine damage. Alrighty. And I'll keep opening an extra one. I don't need an extra one to pay for it. So that brings down to that. And Kingsport waddles a little further away, saying, Oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. And Iggy, it's your turn. <clears throat> All right, so let's see here. Where am I? You are way off to the right. Uh, you're right here. It's not really far away, yeah. Yeah. Uh, what do I want to do? Let's see. I guess I'll run uh, 25 feet forward towards our little buddy there we're trying to kill. And I'll, uh, I'll take a taunt shot uh, with my uh, fireball from okay. disadvantage, I guess. Yeah, it's 110 feet. Uh, didn't we just discuss it to mean to fire? Yeah. Oh, well, I guess yeah, I want to do that. No, because then uh, if, I'm, if I roll a one, I blow my thing up. What's the range of your gun? 60 only. Only 60? Oh, wow. Yeah. Now, I'll just, uh... I'll just run ahead, uh, 25 more. And that'll be my turn. Okay. And I'll tell Hot Rod to run right beside me. Alright. Alrighty. Then Lilith, what is she gonna do? Are we taking turns or do you just wanna eat, keep going? I'll just let you go. Alright. Um. Lilith will move up uh, 40 feet, ahead, like basically straight forward. Because I think that's her movement. Yep. Um, and we'll uh, move the moonbeam directly in front of that guy, but not on top of him. Okay. So, you've actually got two people here. Sorry, I didn't move the player view box up. Oh, okay. So. Then, uh, effectively, then what I want would be the moonbeam to move in front of the dude that's closest to us there. I, guess, I don't know what number letter he was there. F. Just move it in front of him. Yep. Okay. Out there works. She'll move um, a little bit back, but about 10 feet over. There. 
Um, yep, and then um, Nudacris will run up beside her um, and just off and up to her right. Using his, uh, no, no, like um, towards H, right side. Um, but like further up, like maybe five feet back and yeah, like <laughs> if that makes Big sense, like that. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, so that, 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 yeah, yeah, that works. Okay. <laughs> okay. Whatever his movement is, speed is, is, but basically like leave a bit of distance between the two of them, but kind of like yeah, they can react to each other still All if right. someone comes after them. And Oya has been told to not attack, but to make sure that no one moves so she's stepping up but not getting within oh she's gonna stay one for the back but not moving into range and then cadavix she'll also take the defensive action so that if anyone attacks her they have disadvantage good idea uh, um Frank, and then he will um he's got oh he's got arcane burst so he's got three of these he's gonna arcane burst the tomb tapper three times that's a miss and a miss and a critical hit So, Spell Drain, triple damage, and the target must make a DC 14, using its, okay, it doesn't have a spell casting ability. Um, guiding attack, maximum damage, and the target has disadvantage on saving throws against spells for 1d4 rounds. Okay, so maximum damage is 45. Necrotic. Damn. And that's down to three. No. Uh, I swapped to the next one because the first one didn't work with the... Because uh, he doesn't have a spell casting. So it's just maximum. Well, shit. But he has disadvantage on spell saves for four rounds. So... Casting uh, any spells that require saves will be easier to hit him. And then there is a gust of another gust of air and a, like a moan. Uh, and. Where's all this stuff coming from? It's totally was his nuts. I'm just waiting for him to appear in the jar. Oh, this dude, eh? Yeah. Um, so... Hold on one moment here. Who has the jar? I think we just left it. Oh, hell no. We wouldn't leave it. I would have carried it if I had to. Yeah. Um, there is a creature coming up from your right flank as uh, Kingsport stops. <laughs> it looks like a skeleton with uh, skeletal humanoid with antlers um, long claws kind of like a ghoul and his robe has specters kind of trying to pull away from him and he is uh, wearing some fairly sparse armor that has uh, um, what's it called ice on it. Now I'm just going to expand him so that you can get an idea of what he looks like. Who the hell is that guy? Motherfucker from Costichi. 
Looks very festive. So he will a nice dress. <laughs> um point. Okay. So he is going to point oh it is within a certain distance. Okay, so oh, that's is it moving around with my something moving around with my screen for some reason. That's weird. Okay, so how many people can he get? He can get. What looks to him like three there. Uh, well, actually, that is the furthest he can go. So he would rather get three in it. And I'm going to open this up again and clear that. And then there is a blast of ice right on top of... Uh, Deckard, Valin, and Veneranda. So I'm going to need deck saves from all three of you. So. Shit, 11. Ooh, that's not good. Valin uh, rolled a natural 20. Yeah, the big boy card. Yeah, we, yeah. let's use a good boy card. Alrighty. And Veneranda fails. Um, so roll. You can roll that with advantage, actually. Give it another roll. Even worse. Fuck me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So the Winter Wait, you get Herald. Plus two to your save because of your stuff. I'm pretty oh, sure. Oh yeah, I got plus two, so eleven. Did it be thir Thirteen. Thirteen. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna help anyways. That is not quite enough. That was literally one away. <laughs> Can um, I turn on my? Uh... Well, you already rolled advantage. Can't get double advantage. I can get double. Unless you're drunk and have luck, right? How does that work again? I don't even know. Yeah, it is. There's something about being drunk or having a disadvantage when you've been lucky and you get to choose the roll. Oh. So it's like you have three rolls. <laughs> um, so. Can I do just do. Uh, it's a bonus action, so I can just misty step out of the way? That is bonus action, not a reaction. Oh. Uh, yeah. It's not your turn. Like so, um, you and Veneranda take 23 points of cold damage, and Valin takes uh, 11. This motherfucker. down to 47 and Veneranda Veneranda's brain is at 32 and her body is at 37 there we go and how are you doing there Deckard I'm still alive what you at uh, 24 24. Alrighty. And, um, yeah. 
Next is the cultists shouting, what the fuck was that? And... Wait, they don't know... 15, 20, 25, We're actually fighting two different... So, I will let you in on this, since it's uh, close to the end of the round and pretty much the end of the night. You are in a three-way fight right now. Okay. You've got the... you've got three enemies who are also enemies of one another. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure the tomb tappers are just mindless. I'm not sure what they're doing. I don't they don't Uh start. you do know that they are attracted to magic. They eat magic. Yeah. Yeah. So, so because they were trying to use the Mythalar, they were attracted to the Mythalar. Yeah, so effectively the Tomb Tappers are not necessarily on anyone's side, they're just right. mindlessly killing anything that there is magic. Yeah. There is the Cultists of Kostichi, um, who want an Everlasting Winter, because, you know, that's his jam. Yeah. And then there is... I'm not sure who... The only other entity I could think of is some kind of... I don't know who was trying to use it there, I don't know who exactly they are that we're trying to offer. That's the one thing that I was trying to push to put together. Is he Unless walking around with those zombies that busted everybody's legs? Uh, no, they are different. No. Oh wait, sorry. These are the these are the people who were dressed like the um. What's that? The lady that attacked us earlier at, when we first got to the oh, town. Oh, the other clan, right? Yeah. Yeah, the clan. The school or whatever. It was. The other and from the so, other school, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I don't remember what they're trying to fucking do. I don't remember what their point of being around here was. I'm trying to remember, but now I can't. It's been too long. The plan is to die by my hands. <laughs> yeah. That's who the slot is. That's who the slot is. It's Diviner. That's what Diviner, it's that's right. 15, 20, 25, 30. Um, um, tiefling named Avarice. I don't remember what. Avarice was. was the uh, leader of the cultists. Yeah, that, from the uh, yeah, from the Arcane from Brotherhood. But she was also a cultist, which uh, Valin didn't know, but Valin did know that Avarice was terrible, and Avarice wanted Valin's head. Yeah, I remember that part, but outside of that, what their reason for being here was has been kind of... Um, the Arcane Brotherhood are kind of here on the same mission as you guys, but competing. Same but competing mission. So yes. technically, they're supposed to be stopping the winter, but these guys are cultists of Kostichi, and sh so uh, Avarice was obviously working against the others. Uh, isn't it like we're Harvard versus Yale or whatever? Yeah. Well, yeah, kind of. But then I think she was somehow, I think, she, and she was somehow corrupted by Kostichi. Or, or I don't know. For some reason, she was trying to keep the winter going, or secretly trying to keep the winter. Going. I don't know. Her so her role in this was it has been convoluted to me. But we also didn't get a chance to interact much with the Arcane Brotherhood in a um, let me just say social context. Is mostly just been us murdering their face the entire time. So, you know. Okay, I don't know if this is going to kill this guy. It very much could. Oh, it very probably will. 15 and... Oh, yeah. Well, it was going to try to eat Cultist A, but it instead sliced him to bits with its claws. And uh, then the stone melders 
will uh, um, say we only need a few more minutes and that's where we will call it at the end of round two starting round three uh, it is nine o'clock so we will pick up next week as you guys are uh, um, facing off against Tomb Tappers, Cultists of Costichi, and the Winter Herald. Oh, the Winter Herald's gonna get his ass handed to him. <laughs> I'm gonna fireball that bastard. Now, if you guys want to talk about Arkenforge. Hey, let's talk about Arkenforge. Yeah. So if you guys haven't heard already, we are an Arkenforge affiliate. And uh, if you want to use the Arkenforge's Master Toolkit program, the same one we use as our maps, on our maps, right? You can use the code word Mushroom Tips, all one word for five dollars off the Master Toolkit on either the Fantasy or Sci-Fi Starter Pack. And then da, 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 take advantage of the 14-day free trial. It's a one-time payment, no subscription fee. It can be used fully offline. You can install it on an unlimited number of devices with one purchase. It's easy to import and manage your own content. Build fully animated maps with real-time lighting. Hook up a TV or projector to play in person. Manager campaign for robust, linkable note system. You can also set the scene with immersive audio, and it is fully commercially licensed, so you can export those maps and do it as you wish. It is also touchscreen compatible, so if you want to use your physical minis, by all means. And yeah, that's uh, Mushroom Tips, five dollars off the Master Toolkit on either the Fantasy or Sci-Fi Starter Pack. And uh, yeah, Arkenforge, fuck yeah, check it out, Arkenforge.com. Yeah. Hoorah. Alrighty. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Hopefully everyone's available uh, for next week as well. I imagine so. I'll be here. Right? Uh, hmm, maybe not. Oh. We might just have to go on without you and just finish it up. We're, we're in the home stretch, damn it. Quit your job. <laughs> We switched the dates off, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> nope, I'm no good for next week. Okay. Well, uh, we can give it a try uh, finishing it uh, off. It will probably be a bunch of combat. So, Pat, if you don't mind running uh, Iggy sure. next week, and then Connor can run uh, Lilith. And yeah, and that's that. That is that. Uh, I'm feeling we should die anyway. we should be very close to the end, and then we'll be able to move on. And uh, Connor, you were right. Last game was seventy one. I went looking in YouTube Studio and found <laughs> last game, and it was seventy one. So this is episode seventy two. Right. Hey. Seventy two, talking about a plan. Yeah. I'm not doing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> An hour much. and a half, two hours of talking about a plan, and then <laughs> going it and not doing that plan. <laughs> completely <laughs> and utterly just... ruined because yeah. there's fucking people here. <laughs> we should totally just literally get that creature out and then just fucking run away. And we're good to go. Yeah. We still got time. Just to do summon it. a Tarask and run away. Yeah. That's... And just run away. <laughs> that, that'd be something. Uh. Ruin my plans for next week. It'd be great. Game over. Everything's done. <laughs> Game over, man. Game over. Yeah, we're oh, done. Let's, let's get a kitty on screen. Three month old little abandoned bastard who's got a new home now. He likes to poop on himself. And he <laughs> likes to poop on himself. Yeah. yeah he likes to. It just happened. <laughs> it just happened three times and needed three baths this week and was not happy after every single one. Well, well, he's he's gonna, gonna, easier. You should get one of the um Moen has these uh like spray shower heads that are magnetic. Oh yeah. You should get one of those, then you can just spray them off. Mm -mm. Throw them in the tub and just keep spraying them. Eh? Yeah, well you're gonna hold on to them. Yeah. 
You're not gonna be like blasting in full blast. It has <laughs> different know. settings. I was I was pretty much using he's tiny. I was using the sink to wash him. Now you just wait until he's like twelve well, pounds. When he when he gets to be Big B's size, I'm hoping he won't be pooping wrong like he is now and he won't be stepping in his own it. poop all the time. He should figure it out. He he will, eventually. Anyway, that's us for this week, so we will see our viewers next week. Uh, give us a like and a share and a subscribe, and there's a bell as well, I think, on YouTube. And if you're watching on uh, Twitch, give us a uh, um, give us a follow. We are 15 away from being affiliates. Hey, we're getting somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. The next thing you know, we'll be better, bigger than Mr. Beaks. <laughs> oh my god. I doubt it. Everyone's literal millionaire. Literal millionaire. Well, we oh, could actually man. help people and not be enough. And then we'll really... be like Cloak and Paul and we'll start fighting and watch that fun. Yeah. Oh, no. I shouldn't see that. I think maybe yeah, it's my. I don't know. He's fighting a lot the of the, yeah, next. A lot of the ones they, they say he pretty much he's paying the guys more money to pretty much lose to. Except for Tyson Fury's brother. <laughs> you know that's what was funny about that. Right. Um, Good night, uh, uh, viewers, and we will get yeah. chatting outside of this. Have a good week.